If you're a man and a dude says, yo, give me some head. Oh. Uh, Even with the gun, I don't think you can get me to do it. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> Rory, if you want to die. You anyway. got to kill me. Take me out right? of misery. Because the moment like I would put my mouth on the <laughs> I would look up and be like, just pull the trigger at this point. Bro, you got to kill me. <laughs> Getting shot with a <laughs> in your mouth is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> No, worry, and Ma. Guys, I have something to tell you. Yeah, great. Maul and I hung out outside of the podcast. Really? Yeah. So we're deading all the rumors that we don't hang out. What? You saw each other a block away from the studio and walked <laughs> over together? We went to Brooklyn together. Something like that. Something we're pretty like much married at that point. You went point. to Brooklyn Chop House? No. I would never go to Brooklyn Chop House. You split, Why? A, you split a Porter House? Oh, yeah, because of the vegan thing. Exactly. Yeah, I don't they, think but they'd be, in, they'd be in there, though. I don't want to go where they be at. Let's, let's, let me start. The, how's that cap? Tell me why that's cap. Tell me why me saying that is cap. So why would you not want to go where the bad is at? Yeah, that's weird. Bleep that. First of all, where I be at, it be some pretty women there. Not Chop House. It just ain't the women that's Instagram and shit, TikTok and shit. I don't want to go with none of them bitches is at taking pictures in front of neon lights. and get. I don't want to know. But the plate says the name of the restaurant. I don't want to know. I don't want to be nowhere near that. That was whoever came up with that idea first was a genius. Oh yeah, putting the Good name branding. of the restaurant. They the they understand IG chicks more than any human being ever. No, it's been name of restaurants on plates since way before social media. But like recently, I feel like the ones that the girls go to all added <clears> the <throat> name to the plate. Yeah. Well, I mean that helps the that specific restaurant. Yeah. Mm. But uh, does it help that specific restaurant though? Yes. Because I feel like I feel like it's certain people you don't want in your establishment. Like, if you have a restaurant or... When it gets to that point, that's when you know you're successful, though. Yeah, but just... There is a such thing as having the wrong type of people in your establishment. This. Well, go on. Cook a little bit more. Yeah. Like, if you have... So like, when Tommy Hilfiger didn't want a certain group of people wearing Tommy, clothes? Tommy Hilfiger never said that. Oh, okay. That's a rumor that they need to, to, to bury and never... That wasn't true? No, that no. wasn't true. Tommy ah. Hilfiger never said that. Look how easy we can put racism <laughs> exactly. on someone's jacket. Exactly. Exactly. What did Crystal really like love black people? I mean, I didn't go down that 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 hole, but they're French though, right? I believe so. Oh yeah, then they said that shit. Yeah. I believe I believe they are. 100%. <laughs> but yeah, it's just certain 100% said that. When you have an establishment like you're open, say you're opening a restaurant and you have an, an an idea of the type of restaurant, the type of decor, the ambiance that you're setting for your restaurant, there is a certain type of people that you hope to attract and a certain type of people that you hope will continue to visit your establishment. Yeah. Now, if, you know, Instagram models or whoever frequents your spot and they they IG and TikTok it and the business is flooded, that's great. But if that attracts a certain aesthetic, like now the baddies from Bad Girls Club is in there and they start fighting in your establishment. It's good promo. No, it's not. <laughs> you don't want that in your establishment. If mm. that's the if that's who you're creating, I get what you're saying completely. But if that's who you're creating that establishment for, Brooklyn Shop House is created for the Instagram models. Yeah. Say less is created for the Instagram models and the rappers. That's the that's who they want in there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If, but if going into it, if you build an establishment and that's not your business model, well, I think um, yeah, because that happens. It could be packed, and it, you know it. But if it's not the right people frequenting your spot and people are fighting and shit is popping off outside, went to, you don't want that in your fucking place of business. Yeah, no, for sure. I don't give a fuck how much money they spend. Not to make it too local, but like Julon, which is a restaurant in New York that became a very industry, music industry spot plus Instagram model spot. Same people that are now say less. I don't think they set out to have that aesthetic, but just leaned into it once it became that. But every, it every ca- spot it made them becomes, successful. Every spot becomes an Instagram vixen spot once one goes there. All it takes is one to go and, and take a picture or video that she was there. But well, say less, like really that was their goal. Because people don't even know what they like no more. People just following who they following. And if mm-hmm. they see somebody go to a restaurant, oh, I want to go there. I want to try the gold chicken wings. Well, then you're- What the fuck are you talking you're about? You're also drawing from the, and especially in a city like New York, that's heavily uh, like touristy. So when the people come and visit, they want to go to these spots in the three nights they're here. So- you're drawing like from all over the place. I feel it's, like it's a people great... don't fuck with those places. I feel like it's all the people that see it and hear about it and like, I gotta go there. Yeah, there's people on social media that are following people that most, some of them don't live in these cities and when they go, they're like, oh, I want to go there. 
But it, me, it's I talk great. to the people it's that's from the home. city, the locals. Like, yo, where's the real good food at? Mm-hmm. Not the social media good food. Come cow. Because my little sisters told me they wanted to go to Brooklyn Chop House, and I said I would rather cut my own fucking foot off. Why they, they want to go to Brooklyn Chop House? Because the, the baddies go there. That's they why want, they want to go. Because a boogie. They want to run. They want to hopefully run in the fab. They, they want to run. They want to run in the fab. We can go to Pergola. You want to run in the fab? We can go to Pergola on a Wednesday at. You know what I'm go to Target in Jersey. You'll run into them. <laughs> Running in, the, running in the fab at Target might be cool though. Beyonce be said, like running that. into a rapper at Target, a well lit. Just go on River Road in Edgewater. Loves, You'll run into your top five. Beyonce says that she loves going into Target in Jersey, like in like masked up and like with a hat on and shit. I'm like, girl, we, you can hide you. You can't. We all know who your security is. Like you can't hide your security. Yeah, I feel like comedy. Yeah, said, Julius is, is more yeah. famous than the, most entertainers, <laughs> bro. If I see Julius, I will have a panic attack. I know Beyonce is somewhere in the vicinity. Yeah. Back to the plate thing, to the point of Instagram models just wanting to take the photo of the plate with the name on it. I feel like if I owned a restaurant like that, I would just fuck with all these women and put like a clock that's permanently on 1111. So every girl's like, oh my God, my angel number. And she's like, uh. like I would just like strategy. fuck with them like that. I, but that's to a just great, have a clock on eleven. Yeah, just 11 always on permanently on eleven. But it's not like for like a neon sign, like it's a gimmick. It literally just looks like a clock. So when they look over to it, they're like, oh my God, this is my moment. Yeah. Or just get nine different versions of plates where you can have 11 11 mm. 3 because it's so rare to see those they don't happen twice a day no not at all it's just You've extremely rare to catch an 11 11 on your wrist if you want to make money though why wouldn't you do that i would like restaurants are taking advantage of the social media dating scene where you need to spend a whole bunch of money to go date a bad chick mm-hmm. so their restaurants can over charge for everything. It's a beautiful business model. Yeah, but the food is suffering now. It's like so many Instagrammable restaurants. There's the neon cool sign mm. and there's all these fucking... And the food is frozen and they throw that shit in the air fryer. <laughs> what? Put some peanut sauce on it and you niggas slop Damn. it up like a What bis- Philippe do to you? Philippe is terrible. <laughs> I've always I, thought that way. I always thought that food oh, was so terrible. Bad. That food is terrible. I never liked Philippe. Never. Philippe is Julon without a, a neon sign. <laughs> without the wings on the wall? Yeah, girls that's all take pictures in front of girls see wings on a wall and they they gotta take a picture or like a, 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 my, uh, like the entrance with just fake plants and you know those things just collect dust speaking <laughs> of dust plants collecting dust plants take collect that fucking dust. plant that's in the fucking front and roll that motherfucker down <laughs> in front of Julon get that shit out of here we do need to put that somewhere it's taking up I know, no, I know exactly where we could put <laughs> it insert photo of I, got a, I, got a, I got a great place where we could put it we have amazing to Fuck that pot. Yeah, that pot, pot is, that pot is nice. What you gonna do with that pot? Get plant another obnoxious plant. No. But like like a reasonable size plant. You could probably fit two plants in there. You can take that pot and put it in your living room. How about that? I would, but I think we could do it something nice with it here. She looks terrible. Mm. Uh I saw a mall's like studio swag yesterday. That was cool. Oh, so that's where you guys were, was the studio. We were in the stew, yeah. Oh, nothing fun. I don't call it the studio, I call it the stew. Hmm? I thought like it maybe was something like fun. So, wh- okay. So you coordinated a studio session and then you ordered Chop House to the studio. God, no. That should come with an A Boogie feature. <laughs> For sure. That's the <laughs> Yeah, A Boogie should pack. bring the food. He should bring the Chop House to you and be like, With a hook. Yeah, like I got a hook for you. Like, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Who are y'all in the studio with? Like y'all being real mysterious. The fuck? I'm not sure if I signed a money bag mall NDA. I'm not sure what I can oh, we talk about. It was mall <laughs> session. So I... I Hmm. People, they'll know about it sooner or later. Um, well, yeah, it was some fun bucket list stuff that happened in the studio that, you know, Maul will be putting out soon. But, you know, it was nice to see your studio swag. How do you feel about my studio swag? I don't, what was your, I don't need, I, I was so like in my phone reading yeah. shit and going through emails and shit. What was your studio swag? You have your laptop, you have. Well, I mean, you saw how I command a room, I believe. Command a room? Yeah. I, I don't know if I saw how you command a room. You you saw my production swag. Or you pulled out the Savion Blanc? No. Rose. Oh, right. There was R- Rose in the studio. Rory does that though. Like no, R- Rory hit me, it was like, yeah, I'll come be a fly on the wall. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and then you just hear the <laughs> He's not a fly on the wall. <laughs> no. Yeah, nah. He's definitely not a fly on the wall. <laughs> He's a mosquito in your ear. There's the different when I say I'm gonna come be a fly on the wall, you won't even know I'm in the room. Like I'll be in the corner chilling in the cut. 
on the couch. Roy's like, yeah, can you slide that over? I'm like, yo, fam, what happened to you being a fly on the wall? Yeah, slide that over right there, then bring that, then double that. She can lay. I'm like, I'm like, yo, what are you doing? I thought she was going to be a fly on the wall. That's the same thing he did at, at, at his album thing. Like, nah, I don't want to give a speech. I don't want to talk about it. But this next song, what, what, we, what we did was we flew out to Morocco and, you know, there was this old, there was this old ancient man in the town that played the Congo ancient man is and we found him and we brought him in and, you know, we flew him out for the day and it was his first time on a plane and we had him play the Congos right here just for these four bars and then Sounds flew like him back album. to his village. Like, it's like, yo, what are you talking about? Oh, I'm, I'm, glad that, talk. I'm glad that the story was entertaining. So I let it rock. Now, can we tell the truth? Uh, that that was that was my truth. <laughs> you got there three hours later than me. Okay. I was a fly on the wall in the All beginning, right. and then I was asked my opinion. Ooh. And then from there, continued to be asked my opinion. And I, the I ideas don't... I had, they wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. So I did them. Oh, okay. I'll double Which by the I'll, I'll double check on that theory. Oh, ask both of them. Because Rory has a, he has a habit of doing that. Like, that's what happened. And somebody be like, well, no, nah, that's not exactly what happened. Like, I asked him what he thought about the verse. And then he was like, well, I mean, I would take this you know, and double lay it over here and then like pan it out that way. And it, OK, so what, but what if I'm right? And what if everyone it's in not the about loves, being, it's loves not about, my idea and goes, yeah, we should do that. Matter of fact, help me do that. It's not it's not about being right or wrong. Mm. It's just that you initially said you would come be a fly on the wall. And I was. And then people started asking me for <laughs> no, shit. No, you were not. You were, you were that never, you came three hours late. Rory, you're never a fly on the wall in the studio. It's okay. You're never a fly oh, on the wall. Oh, yeah, studio. cool. Never. I, I agree with you. All right, so don't tell, don't call me and tell me you'll come be a fly on the wall. That's all I'm saying. Whether you're right or you're wrong in your ideas, that's not questionable here. I'm mm -hmm. never questioning that. I'm just saying, don't be like, yeah, I'll come be a fly on the wall. It's like, bro, you ain't gotta do that with me. You're never gonna be a fly on the wall in the studio. It's never gonna happen. Okay, well, I tried. And then no, you did they, not. Yes, I. You weren't even there. I don't have to be there. To, I know you. I know you. I don't have to. I don't have you to. You know. Be, you know me as a phenomenal fucking producer. No I matter know, what room I, I'm in, I know and you. even the legends ask me what to do. I know. I, I know you as somebody yeah. that if you're in the studio, you're not going to be a fly on the wall. That's what I know. In that setting, in any it's setting tough. in the studio, you're not going to be a fly on the wall. I definitely have before. No, you have. Well, did, did he make the songs better? This, I mean, the song was cool. It's not like it's not even done yet, though. It's just ideas. It's like it's not a a complete song yet. Well, because you already got to finish it. It's just a, you know, it's just the shell is great though. Like the shell of it is there, but you know, still got to tweak some shit and change verses and add shit. Like it's, but it's gonna be a, a good record though. For sure. Nas and Hit Boy, I was a fly on the wall. I didn't say a fucking word. I was terrified. You didn't tell Nas he changed your life. No, remember because I like he knows that. But oh, see, yeah. but that's different because you wouldn't you wouldn't do that with Nas though. You wouldn't just start trying to like produce a Nas record. Whoa, the people we were with yesterday are of the caliber. They are Nas in their Oh, field. the producers for sure. To me, that's, that's cool. even crazier to tell the uh, legendary producers like that how to produce, let alone a rapper. I'm just I'm just Nas isn't a producer, so he could I'm just take some to Rory production. calling me and saying he's gonna be a fly on the wall in the studio. That's never happened in the history of Rory them. Has Rory ever <laughs> has Rory ever been a fly on a wall in a studio? Never happened. Well, Rory, they laid they laid the first. No, nah, hit boy. I, I I could believe that, but I would have to. I would have to ask hit. I would have to ask hit boy. No, he. I was dead. Quiet. I was. I was terrified. He was starstruck. Yeah, sure. absolutely. So, do, are you getting points on the record? No, like you. Gonna, oh, you didn't I get do, that I do much it, of it. I do it for the love. For the. <laughs> you said, give me a smooth eight. <laughs> for the love is crazy. <laughs> I do it for the love of the game. Um, I was a fly on the wall when they laid the first verse. I was asked an opinion. I gave a suggestion of how to structure it going into the, to create a bridge and to create a hook. They loved it. Yeah. And then asked me to help out in creating it. Mm. Okay. And then, and then from there it became my record. Mm. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm just laughing at the fly on the wall shit. <laughs> He's the loudest fly on the wall you'll ever see <laughs> in the history of flies on the wall. Let me just tell y'all that. But this this he's goes a horse fly. Yeah, oh no, he's a fucking he's one of those That's hornets. You notice in the crib. He, like. He's a hornet out the nest. That's what he is. Okay, but this goes. This is a callback to a great conversation we had about opportunities and taking them rather than just being the quiet See, that's why, that's why they told him to stay away from D'Angelo's door. <laughs> remember, remember when his ass was walking back and forth, acting like he had to use the bathroom. 
and kept playing instrumentals like this in his ear. And he's like, yo, fam, do me a favor. Don't walk past this door again. Like, see, that's why. Fly on the wall. Tapping, snapping, and humming. Yeah. Mm. Fly on the wall. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Sit your ass down. Stop walking past this D'Angelo room. Okay. But you remember the conversation that we were having in that regard, yeah. right? And for those that don't know, we were discussing if you have the opportunity to work with certain people or be in studio sessions, would you not respectfully shoot your shot when the time makes But that's sense. not an opportunity to work with D'Angelo. I, I know. I'm, I'm talking, about talking about last about, night. Last night. We already know I would have fucked up that D'Angelo situation. <laughs> but I still would have tried. Mm. Yesterday was a bucket list thing for me. I didn't overstep. I was asked. And I thought it went great. Mm. And now I have a different relationship with those guys outside of just some media pod shit. Mm -hmm. Now there's a musical relationship. Mm -hmm. Ma, if you was a real friend, you would be happy for him. I, I'm, ma I'm mad for him? Yes. Mad for him is crazy. I'm, I'm mad for him. <laughs> I didn't say you were mad for him. I, I'm, just say, I'm just laughing at the fact he said he was going to be a fly on the wall to me, and I know he's never going to be a fly on the wall in the studio. That's all. I'm, I'm just, that's all I'm talking about. But well, are you happy for him that you helped further his... Musical relationship. Sure, I'm not. I, I'm not here to. I'm. I'm here to always right, right, further anybody's right. situation. Right, has his hand up. Wait. So white. Poindexter. Me, you, Simba, ATL, Jacob. Sorry, I dropped a lot of names. In Atlanta, mm -hmm. we were both flies in the wall. Mm. Uh, there's well, been well, JD. Well, se there's well, been JD I, I sessions left. where I haven't been I, a well, fly on the wall, and I, I have know, been. I don't know how much of a fly on the wall you were after I left. I left that session. Oh, we didn't, we didn't do shit. Uh, I, don't, we, we I, actually, I don't know. I think we saying. smoked hookah and, and drank Duce. All I'm saying is if a cop asked me what happened after I left, I, had, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't You're know. You're still an accessory. I would have to ask ATL Jacob, like, yo, how did the session go? If he'd be like, yo, nah, you know, Rory threw some ideas at them. I'm like, okay, I so didn't. he wasn't a fly on the wall. <laughs> like, that's all I'm saying. Actually, the only thing we did do was listen to ATL Jacob's, like, his personal music and shit he was doing for other people. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Where my only response was, that's fire. I didn't make any suggestions. I didn't say, yo, you should get this person on. The I just enjoyed the music he was playing because it was great. Okay. JD Sessions, I've been a fly. Sometimes I haven't. But we've been in with JD, Division, chilling. I've been a fly on the wall. Rory's just, yeah, I was going to say, he's just combing through moments where he's been a fly on <laughs> Every the wall. studio session he's and been it's in burning the past it. 10 years. You know how much his feet was like this the whole time in his sneakers when he was just trying to be a fly on the wall? Like, <laughs> I, just want them, I just want them to stack that one part right there. I just, but I don't want to say it. <laughs> like, it's okay to say it. It's okay to offer some outside air. Sometimes that's great for a studio. That's part of a studio. That's why I love what Kanye does. Like, people that are in sessions with him, if he gets inspired by what you're wearing or something you said, like, he says it on, like, he'll give you credit on the song. Like, Sometimes you need that in the studio. You need other ears and other ideas and other, you know, points of views on a song. What does somebody hear? Because it, it may be a great reference, a great recommendation. So when I was growing up, I always seen studio sessions like they always painted them like it was mad bitches in there. Like just like bitches in the studio half naked. Is it still like that? Like are bitches still giving each other head like in that one Jay-Z interview or no? Well, that was Uncle Luke's interview with Jay-Z. And if Uncle Luke is doing an interview, I'm sure they're going to be naked women around. That was in a studio? I thought that was like in a strip club. Oh, it, might have been. Uh, it was somewhere. Oh, it was in the booth? Sofas. No, it was like <laughs> sofas. It was, I don't know where they was at. It probably was in a, a lounge area or something like that. I don't think it was a recording studio. She ate pussy for a while. Well, you know, when you want to be thorough in your investigation of mm. the box. Do you think she like tuned out the interview and was just tunnel vision? Oh, yeah. On eating pussy? Yeah. Or do you think she was like trying to hear what, what Hove had to say? Hove probably right. was like, yeah, you know, I just wrote that one take off the top. She's probably like, that's fire. Yeah, that they ain't care nothing about what Jay and Uncle Luke was talking about. I don't Let, know. All right, this is like another $500,000 or lunch with Jay-Z. Mm. Listen to a Jay-Z interview in person or eat pussy? Me? Oh, yeah. I'm eating Who's pussy. pussy? <laughs> one that you like. I'll catch that on YouTube the next day. But like yeah. in front of... No, you don't have to eat pussy oh, in front of Jay. About to say, no. <laughs> <laughs> who the, Yo, you eating pussy in front of Jay? Yeah, I'm about to say who's doing that. Like, and with y'all history, he would he would steal the chick. Uh, yeah, He'd be like, eating I, the pussy. Yeah, yeah, probably and doing the interview. <laughs> At the same time, I'd just be a fly on the wall. That's somebody's mom now. And this is how I know that like I am kind of prude. I'd be very uncomfortable being thigh to thigh with that woman that's getting her pussy ate when I'm doing an interview. That's pre-COVID. Damn, this is pre-9-11. The world was so lit. It's just fun. Yo, you know what's funny about seeing Jay in a situation like this? 
this is so like not who he is today. <laughs> like, well, yeah. I, was cool. that even him then? No. <laughs> like that's pro- that was the first and only time he's ever done an interview like that. But it's Uncle Luke. So. He's probably so uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> it's Uncle Luke. So what you gonna do, man? That's part of his uh his aesthetic. Have yeah. some to have some women around that are. You know, enjoying each other's bodies. So this was what the studio looked like last night. I'm sure life was, so, yeah. No, was the it? studio last night looked nothing like that. I, mm. I could promise you that. Looked nothing like that. Yeah, there was one girl there, and she was there to lay vocals. It was that nothing. Was it. There was nothing like this. This is a whole different type of session. And, and to answer the your question, Maris, I, don't, I live in the R and B world where that that doesn't happen. Like the rap world is where they just have because it takes them five minutes to lay a verse, and then they have a six hour studio session. So yeah. it becomes a party. R&B takes longer and it's less distracting. So I don't know. Yeah. That, I mean, I get it. It just seems like it would be fun to watch. Women always think that men is somewhere and it's just like a Hype Williams video shoot. I promise you it's not. I mean, I think it's important for artists to like dedicate a session to inviting a bunch of women and like casual fans to hear shit. Because you need the opinion of the casual fans. Come on, a listening session? Yeah. I feel like women should be in every studio session. Not like there to fuck, but like women should, you should always So what are you there making... for? I'm joking. To cook. Yes, I agree. You should have You should always be making music that is pleasurable. To clean up. Yeah. We spilled so, Hennessy. Yeah, yeah. Fold, but, fold my hoodie. Yeah, roll my blunt. For women's ears. It's the lady referee. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I get it though. I, I agree with what you're saying. Like you need a woman, like I would love to have women around when you're creating music because women tend to be honest with their reaction to music. But then you, sometimes you run into like the woman that's actually like a music fan for real. Mm -hmm. And she has no idea like how to actually contribute to the studio. But she's one of those that's like, you know, I listened to Wiz Khalifa before anyone. One of those. Yeah. And she will just not shut the fuck up during the session with suggestions, but has no idea what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. Has never seen Pro Tools and is just saying shit. She's just a curator of vibes. Exactly. Yeah. They're just, annoying. Rory's describing the Rory of women. <laughs> it's not me at all. We can we can try to make that 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 narrative well, fun. Would, would you not it's call not. her a fly on the wall? That woman is definitely not a fly on the wall. But yeah, so she's a mosquito at night buzzing around. I'm talking about the girl that when you're doing the verse is like, you guys should think about putting a hook on it. It's like, yeah, no, we were gonna get that. <laughs> Shut up. That's fucking annoying. <laughs> no, that's the girl that can leave now. I'm or or the- like the most annoying girl that like shouts out features that are so astronomically impossible. Like, I think J. Cole would sound great on this. Mm-hmm. All right, fucking call him then. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to have him on this too. We all do. <laughs> you don't say. You don't say J. Cole would kill this. Ooh, I'm... Drake should do this hook. Cool. She probably knows him though. It's kind of sick. Taylor Swift would sound great on this. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> I'm quiet in studio sessions because I'm so, like, I'm so terrified and I never want to be that girl. But sometimes I do think like, oh, this would be like, this doesn't sound right. I can't say what's wrong with it, but something's wrong. Because I don't have the term in my brain of what's wrong, but something's wrong. Something's missing. And I just know that that's not helpful. Somebody will probably look at me like they want to punch me in the face. So I just shut up. But you know what? This, this, you shouldn't be afraid of that though. Because shout out, shout out my guy, Mez. He, uh, he directed, uh, J. Cole's video. I forgot the name of it, but it's probably still J. Cole's most viewed uh, video on YouTube. That was his first time. Oh, he did he do role models? Was that the video where they were driving the like the, the Maybach truck through the mud and shit like that? Oh no, I don't think it's that one. He met he when we were in LA, he told us this this story. You, like, and he like that story is phenomenal. He didn't know any terms, he didn't know equipment, he didn't know anything. He was just saying, like, yo, just pull a camera out. Middle I want it to look like this. Child, yeah. Like, what was it? Middle, Middle child. child. Which Middle was, child. Which was huge. So Mez, shout out my guy Mez. Mez directed that. That was the first video he ever directed. He didn't know what equipment was what. At the time, it was his most uh, most watched uh, video on YouTube. Yeah, that's that song broke like a shit ton of records. So. That's his biggest, his highest performing record. Yeah, I crazy. To that. I just listened to that song in yeah. the morning. It's an amazing song. So yeah, when you say when you say stuff like that, like you don't know how to, don't be scared. Like you still have creative energy and creative, you know, thought. Like just because you don't know how to say it and verbalize what you're trying to say, that doesn't mean that what you have to offer is not something of substance and something that's dope. I was when I was watching the Murder Inc. Thanks, doc. I forgot the entire story, but Irv like got his first shot to produce. I forgot what artist it was. Had no idea how to make beats. And was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll meet you at the studio tomorrow." Mm-hmm. And then like called his friend and was like, 
yo, what's an MPC? Mm -hmm. Where do I get one? Can you show me how to work it in three hours? Right. And spent the whole night practicing and went the next day. Mm -hmm. Was like, I'm your producer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes not fake it till you make it, but you have to see opportunities and you just go after it sometimes. You know, just know, style know when to take your take your shot. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But also be prepared as well. You know what I mean? As best you can. Like, I think that Mez story is phenomenal and just, you know, speaks to somebody that's just a creative genius and just was like, fuck it, I'll try it. Has he gotten more work since then? Like more big work since then? Um, I think Mez has directed some videos. I, I know he I think he directs most of his his own shit because he's an artist as well. Um but I'm not sure how many other uh other yeah. artists he's directed for after that. Yeah, Mez, Mez is super talented. No, Mez is one of the, you know, if you don't, if you're not familiar with with Mez, he's one of the most creative and, you know, talented people that I've ever had the opportunity to kick it with and, and get to know. Like his his creative mind is just amazing. Like I believe he did a, a, a he did a Miri for Cole as well, uh, in twenty twenty one. So he's, a Miri? Yeah, he's got a couple records with Cole alone. That was when they were like on the FDR and was that in New York? It's not that important. Or maybe Felton directed that one. I don't know. We're kind of going on, on tangents here. Yeah. But that was, I think that was really good advice, Maul, um, for you to give just to the listeners. Amari, period, sorry. Because there's a lot of people who who probably feel yeah. the same way that I feel when they they feel like they would be good at something, but they might not have the technical background for it or things like that. And, you know, you freeze up, you get scared, you get imposter syndrome. So, yeah, because you don't. You think that, you know, a lot of times we put these obstacles in front of ourselves that are not even there. Like we think things are a lot more difficult than they are and a lot tougher than they are. And then it's like, you got to start some sometime. You got to start somewhere. You know what I mean? Like just, just start and a lot of the times you'll figure it out on the way. Like it's a lot of our favorite executive producers and, uh, you know, songwriters, they didn't know how to structure a, a hook and a bridge and things like that. They just know that they've had ideas and they've had lyrics and, you know, they just was like, I just want to put this out. And some of these people are now in the songwriting hall of fame, you know, mu music, <clears throat> mu musical geniuses that just didn't, you know, they didn't know at first what they wanted to do, but they know they had creative energy and they wanted to, 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 to put it out into the world. So and that's, what's so interesting just about creative in general. Like you could have someone that, goes through all the steps of NYU film school and like all the technical shit, you know, they get the mentor and they do everything. And then just some kid that picks up a camera ends up having a better creative mind mm -hmm. and goes much further. Same with trained musicians, could fucking out the ass with every school you could think of. Mm -hmm. And then you get some kid that literally just has a vision and a MacBook. Right. And outdoes that person. Mm -hmm. You know, which I think is great. Some people hate that, but. Yeah. As long as you have that creative passion, man, just create. Like, don't fuck the technical terms and all that other shit and the, the legal jargon and all that. Man, fuck all that. Just create and you'll figure that shit out along the way. Fuck music theory. Yeah, fuck Fuck that. what key we're in. Yeah, who gives a fuck? Let's just go. Just auto-tune that shit. <laughs> don't worry about it. Just get in the Put booth. Put some verb on my shit. Yeah, just shut up. Just and say some shit and, and <laughs> hit the auto-tune and we got a fucking hit. And that's just yeah. how shit goes. No, I don't know what I said. Yeah. It sounds good, though. Yeah, fuck that. Um, I like the strategy we did a few episodes ago of throwing a voicemail in early. Do we want to do that today? You've got mail. I was going to do a uh, classic relationship one, but going off the current conversation we're having, I'm going to switch it. And this one is directed at Damaris, but it's a, it applies to, to everybody here. So, Hey, everyone. My name is Michelle. I'm calling from Chicago. Hey, Michelle from Chicago. And I have a question for everybody, but more specifically Damaris. Uh, I know that she has a 30th birthday coming up, and it had me reflecting on the big 30 experiences that I wanted to have before I turned 30 a couple years ago. The and big 3 0 ones. The first one was to visit all seven continents. Uh, I ended up making it to five, so I'm pushing that goal now to before I turn 35. Uh, and the she other one is to have a threesome, and I knocked that shit off my list like, two days before my birthday. It was incredible, crazy ass story, but great experience. Tell it. So my question is, uh, before turning 30, Damaris, is there anything that you had wanted to accomplish for yourself and check off your pre-30 list? Or for anybody, is there any silly little goals like that that you had uh, before a big milestone birthday? Um, Rory, I really hope to hear new music mm. from you this year. Hmm. 
Your Look at album that. stays on repeat wow. in her house. Stays on repeat. So you guys make it back to Chicago this year. It's, ne- it's never not playing in her house. Stays on repeat. Michelle, stop lying. You listening <laughs> to drill music and them Chicago niggas all day in your house. <laughs> You think she played Chief Keef in her threesome? One hundred percent. Oh wow! Not my album. Bang yeah. bang! Hell yeah! Bang bang! <laughs> to a threesome is crazy. Exactly. Two people uh, are coming. So out Demaris, room. you're halfway to fifty. So what we're gonna do is we want to know no, exactly what are your goals 60. for 60. turning thirty. Foursome. Oh Five wow! Um, <clears throat> Six them. I'm like yeah. I'm I'm over halfway. Um, thanks Michelle for calling in. Honestly, I gotta, I gotta, I have to, to be honest, I had a bunch of little goals, uh, you know, in my twenties that I wanted to hit before 30, I wanted to, uh, definitely be married. Um, or at least think Sick. next decade, we'll give another shot. All right. Stay in the game, right. baby. Keep stay in up. the game. Keep your head up. Keep your eye on the ball. All right. Yeah. All right. What's next? Where else did we I fail? wanted to be married. I wanted to be on my way to having children. Um, I wanted to uh, own a business. There were so many things that in my 20s, I was just like, oh, like these are things that I, I'm going to accomplish before I hit 30. And then my 20s came and all the things that I sh- thought I should be working towards were actually not the things I, were working to- I was working, working towards. But before 30, um, currently... I'm really close, but I just want to get my head right. I just want to be... You're close to getting your head right? You want to get some head? Can you guys take anything seriously? No. Good. No, I'm letting them get their... Like, their <laughs> on the same. like you know. All right, but okay, but let's be serious. No, I just you, actually... You want good head before your 30s? I would. That would be nice. If you right. haven't gotten am, good I'm head before your 30s... <laughs> no, just like... You shouldn't be focusing on all seven continents. Go get some head. You, yeah. I would. I mean, going to see all seven continents would have been dope. She's at five, so that's fine. You think she had a that's threesome on, on one of those trips or a local? The Antarctica. Antarctica trip. She was a little late on the threesome. My threesome was like my 21st birthday. Well, I've never had a threesome, so I'm extremely late. So maybe for 50, that could be one of your goals? Yeah, but you did the train. <laughs> you don't want to be having threesomes in your 50s or 40s? Oh, this nigga's having threesomes and fivesomes in their 50s. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we just saw the Diddy stuff. True. I can't wait till you see Diddy outside. I cannot. Not, I hope I'm, I hope I'm standing right. There. I hope I'm standing blue. right there. <laughs> what? It's gonna be cultural. Russell. It's gonna be Russell Simmons, Diddy, and Julian in Bali. <laughs> I hope I'm standing right there. <laughs> you ain't gonna help him. No. <laughs> Fuck you me. That's a Diddy side. I'm not taking no. It's a one on one. No. How? I don't know. You're there. You should be involved. Fuck out of here. Hey, man. I'm, I'm just a fly on the wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I head up. I'm like, yo, listen. You got to fight. What you gonna do? I'm not. I'm not in that. I don't know. Square him. Square him and fight like a man. Just offer him some head. He'll feel like that's his bag. Like but I when said, I said it. I just I just can't wait to be there. I just can't wait to be there. But yes, Damaris, you want to get your head right before Michelle, 30. yes. I just want to, I want to get my head right. But to be fair, going into 30, I feel like I'm getting older. So there's a bunch of things I can't do. Like, I feel like I'm getting too old to wear crop tops. I feel like I'm getting too old to have certain piercings. Or like, I'm getting too old to dye my hair certain colors. Like, I feel like I have to enter into like my grown woman. Mm. Business girl with a bob you gotta, you gotta era, so dress for the job, dress like a teacher. Well, to, yeah, y'all see, I got this Rory. fucking pants suit on. I don't want to have this shit on. I want to have a bathing suit top and some cargo pants on with some heels. But I feel like I'm getting and going cold. weird. We're exactly so not weird, weird in this weird. current environment. Yeah, where are you going with that on? <laughs> like, I, I like wanna... that's how Glorilla dresses every day. <laughs> but that's why yeah. I want to go back to like how like Lala used to dress on MTV in like 2000. Yeah, but she was at the beach house. Yeah, she was at. Okay, yeah. She's at, yeah, not she's sound, at work. Not at a MTV. soundproof room. Yeah, she was at the MTV beach With house. controlled like, lighting yeah. and no windows. Maris want to wear bikini top and cargo pants here. Like, what? There's no windows. <laughs> she, wants, she wants to be a VJ in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> not Remember a VJs? A VJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all podcasters now. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's all it is. Ixi, I'm going backwards. So, all right. Yeah. Well, so Any, the, Anything so, y'all wanted to, to hit before y'all hit 30 or a major milestone age? I just wanted to be alive. Mm. That was it. That's deep. Yeah. Course I had. Alive. 30, because you, you know, so you, when you think about 30, when you're like 15, <laughs> growing up in a certain environment and seeing people even die, go to jail for it's like, damn, 30, like niggas don't make it to 30. Yeah. So I was just like, man, listen, I'm just, I just want to be healthy. I don't want to be in jail. I want to be alive. And and that was enough for me. Like I think sometimes I it's great to have goals, but sometimes you just gotta just have some just Bottom line shit. Because then if you don't hit those big goals, you start feeling depressed. Like, uh, my life is, 
And then somebody on your timeline will save your day and they'll say, well, Oprah didn't start her show until she was 42. You're like, all right, I got yeah. some time. <laughs> no, then you'll scroll to the next uh, page and it'll be someone your age that has hit every goal you were trying to do. Exactly. Or no, it'll be- they, they just bought a house. They just yeah. had their third kid. Yeah, they're you know married. what gets me now? The fucking, the 19, 20 year old girls on Twitter who fucking own hair salon, multiple hair salons in multiple cities and drive around in fucking G-Wagons and they're like 20 years old. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I always sit my 20s fucking, so. Those are all the Trump supporters. Maul, uh, you, we we're talking about 30, but when's your, is your next milestone, would you say it's 45 or 50? Like, when do, what do you look at now, time-wise? I don't, I don't, I don't, I've, I've, I set like monthly shit. Mm. Like, it's not like yearly or, or. You're more of like a Tuesday years. guy. No, I just set like monthly shit. I just want to have certain hour. shit done and knocked off. Like, I'm not, I don't, I don't, that yearly shit, you know, that's, or birthdays is cool, but. I'm I'm more like realistic. I'm like, all right, I need to get this done before March, April. Like, I'm doing shit like that now. To Maul's earlier point, I would say my goals now is to actually put less pressure on myself yeah. about goals Fuck and that. enjoy the time I'm in. Enjoy right now. As much as I can. Enjoy that's, right now. That's a big thing in my 30s that I've been trying. Failing miserably at, by the way. Yeah. But at least, you know, I'm aware. Yeah. Sometimes you got to just enjoy where you at. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the process. And just know that, you know, it was times when you didn't know, think you would be where you are right now. It definitely was times where I didn't think I would be where I'm at right now. So if if that, that would that be the advice you guys would give me going into 30? Because I did want to ask you guys, it's funny that this voicemail came up. If you had any advice for me going into 30, I'll be 30. And My advice for you going into 30 would be be open and willing to try and accept things that you never even thought about. Anal. I don't know where that falls on the list, but hey. Well, based on that reaction, it sounds like it hasn't been done yet. Um, mine's gonna be <laughs> kind of kind of corny. <laughs> you have to get to know yourself again. Like learn to get to know yourself in your 30s because it's not the same as your 20s. Yeah, re get to know yourself. Find out things that you may have disliked at one point, may like now. Like anal. do do the things that you like to do in your 30s. Anal. Not what you think. You're supposed to be doing in your thirties. Do the things that you genuinely just like to do. But I never want to be like that. I never want somebody to be like <clears throat> her old ass. She need to go sit down somewhere. Like I can't be the old bitch. Thirty is not old. Trying to look young. Thirty is not old. But to the young girls, it's old. Because I remember looking at thirty year olds like she didn't sit her ass the fuck down. She's but old as fuck. As a thirty year old, you shouldn't feel old. Any I pressure or yeah. judgment from people in their twenties that you're gonna don't measure know. yourself to someone that was born in two thousand two. <laughs> Shut up, bitch. Like because you have to remember, you, fucker, you we were all that same ignorant childhood. twenty-two-year-old thinking we knew everything and looked at thirty-year-olds as like, oh, oh my fucks. God. Now I know I was wrong, but that doesn't mean I'm going to judge the twenty-two-year-olds as acting the same way I did as far as viewing people in their thirties. The only thing, the same thing. The only thing I would say for you is you still are young enough to still be in the clubs. Yeah, but you, it's 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 how you acting in the club now, though. That's that's the only difference. You could definitely be thirty and in the club. These bitches are old. There's, yeah, no, you there's can be 30 49 in the year olds in the club. Yeah, you can't throw ass true. like you're in your early 20s. You but got, see, I stopped. <clears throat> excuse me. Like, I stopped doing that a long time. I don't. Being in the club and throwing ass is just not. I'm a very. Mm, like how Rihanna. With the did champagne it. in my hand. Rihanna in India when she like half pump faked it. Like you got to do it like that. You can't like. Put at 30? Like, huh? At 30? Yeah. No, at 30, you can still you throw could, that ass. You can throw ass at 30. Yeah, hell you yeah. You can throw ass at 60. You, well, right. where are you? <laughs> church Okay then that, That's that's, <laughs> that's, that's cool That's cool As long as you're in church You're in the six, deacon's chamber That's cool Throw that ass Throw that ass Miss Mary Ms. But no Mary. you can't At 30 you could be in a club Throwing ass For sure Yeah Okay so what's the What's the cutoff for that 34 I don't know I, no, I would say like eight. 37 Okay There's never a cutoff It's the cutoff Is to the consistency If you're 37 And doing that Every Saturday and Sunday Then we have an issue yeah. Mm. But if you want to go to the club every now and then and throw some ass with your friends, I don't think there's an age limit. Yeah, I agree. Okay. For women. I think for men, it's a little creepier when you're the old guy in the club. But if you're going with other old guys, like if you're just going with your older friends to just have a fun I'm night not like that, that, club. that sounds like the police need to be called. I'm a not whole, a whole group. <laughs> if you're not, if, yeah, but if you're intense, where is security? To, if you're intense or, or tension, did y'all take y'all meds? <laughs> like, say you're going with your wives. My wife, and you bring your wife to the club, and it's you, your two best friends, and their wives as well. There's six of you, and you have a table, you're doing the night out. That's your night. 
yes, it's creepy if it's like the single dude in his like fifties that just has him at the table and then like every bitch half his age. Yeah, that's weird. That yes, that's the no go. No, I can't wait till you run into Leonardo. <laughs> see, now why are you trying to line me up against every A list celebrity? <laughs> I just can't wait. I can't wait till you see him. He moves differently. Because I feel like that's someone I would have seen in those months, but he moves on a whole. He'll just bring him to the yacht. I was in a club Give me your phone one night, though. Ugh. Did you lose you the pussy bitch? patrol? Did you take your bitch? I would love to go out with the pussy patrol. Was, oh. That wasn't their names, was it? Yeah. Yeah. It was pussy patrol? Yeah. It was uh, David Blaine, uh, Leonardo, Toby uh, McGuire. E, e from Entourage. E from Entourage. That's a Forgot sick, his name. That's a sick crew. Yeah, and none of them are hot but Leonardo. So I know Leonardo was just pulling all the bitches and whoever he didn't want, he was passing back to the other ones. First of all, David Blaine. Okay, David. I feel like could probably just off sheer creepiness and mystery could compete with Leo at that time in the club. <laughs> Sheer. I think bitches was definitely trying to go over to David Blaine to see what the was pussy posse. Pussy posse. See, that's what I thought. They were come on. Matching robes is crazy. Killing them. You know what they was doing? Matching robes. That's the that's the morning after the hang hangover night. Mm -hmm. Everybody like we got to drink green tea. <laughs> <laughs> drink a lot of green tea. I heard it helps. And wear this robe. Kevin Connolly was in it as well. Yeah, it's E from Entourage. Oh, that's his name. Um, I never knew his actual name. It must have been really interesting when like one of them was method acting at the time, like really getting into a role mm -hmm. when they were at the club, that would have been kind of creepy. But David Blaine, I feel like, was doing that at all times, so. You know he went out with Maybe. a deck of cards. Oh, for sure. <laughs> he was making bitches' <laughs> panties disappear. And like 12 Rolexes. Making bitches' panties disappear is, you're serious? Yeah. Or Probably. That, I, I was. Making. I was, I was 10 when they were doing this. If a this. nigga make your, your panties disappear, you gotta fuck. Do you? <laughs> I kind of feel like... Or you've already been fucked and don't know it That's yet. crazy. That sounds like a Rick Ross line. Um, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, if you don't know where your panties are... Insert ad here. What else don't you know? <laughs> and you know... you know Now a word from our sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, at times, he wasn't, even, he wasn't even doing tricks Drink or it. magic. He was just hiding behind his allure and just staring them in the eyes like, you're wet now. Yeah. Aren't you? Aren't you? They used to beat up people. They used to like get in like gang fights and shit, which is pretty funny. Gangs yeah. of white men do. You leave them alone long enough. Yeah, they were. Uh, That's obviously. a sick crew, though. They said they were highly offensive and misogynistic. No shit, <laughs> they were A-list actors in their early twenties in New York. And if you like look at that squad, I think Kevin is from Long Island. Terrible drinkers. Yeah. Uh, David Blaine's from Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and Leo's like an actual LA kid, right? Yeah. That's add in some Jaeger. That's a scary fucking crew. Jaeger. <laughs> <laughs> Add some crantinis in there, and they're punching somebody. I yeah. think having a magician as, as part of your like crew is fire. Fire. That's you know. fire. We Espe especially one. when you're not him. Like to mean? be the magician's whack, but to have him around is fire. That's I think. Fu I think the hate and friend would be the funniest to observe. Like, let me show you how. That's not even a real magic trick. Yeah. Like whispering the chick's ear, like giving them the like, secret. Like, yo, you know he's not even magic, right? That was definitely. Imagine easy. going, yo, you know magic doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's od hate. That's OD. I would hate on David Blaine for fun. Absolutely. If there was a group of girls there. I would tell every girl, like, yo, you know he has his three coins. It's in his back pocket. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely doing <laughs> yeah. that. Like, nah, but see, I wouldn't like that dude. Like, why are you being a fucking hater? Like, Nah, I would hate, like, yo, you brought a dove to the club? <laughs> like, did you have that in your, <laughs> yeah. your jacket the I, whole time? How'd you get that in? Frogs come yo, how, how, no one patted him down? How did you get that in? You just spit up an aquarium. <laughs> 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 fuck out of here. Yo, having a friend that could just spit up frogs on demand. You just like spit a koi fish. That gotta be fire. Financially, that's great though because you don't have to buy bottles in the club. Yeah. Just, just have him drink like three Before bottles leave. of vodka. Mm. Before I leave. And then he can just spit it into everyone's drink. Yo, you want a drink? <laughs> <laughs> Is that 42? <laughs> Is that 42? <laughs> it's filtered. This Casamigo, filled. warm. <laughs> Call me nasty though, but when it comes to club bottle prices, I may, I may nasty. take... You would drink the Blaine. I would take the Blaine Forty Two instead of paying the Blaine Forty Two. <laughs> instead of taking a fifteen hundred dollar tab to get a forty dollar bottle. Yeah, I might do that. Nah, give me a bottle of water. Fuck that. I'm on that's, water all night. Being in the club on water is awful. That sounds like the seventh circle of hell. That's when I found out that the clubs was really terrible. Yeah, that's why. When I stopped drinking, I said, "Oh, the clubs. Clubs are trash." Yeah, like this shit is just loud, and they want you to just get drunk. But this shit is really trash. Everybody's on their phone. Everybody's just standing around. Chicks just making videos of themselves. 
Acting like they like the chicks they sit next to. They don't even they don't even know these girls. They don't like these girls. Nah, it's their bestie. They just met on IG. Like, get be sober and just sit back in the club and look at everything. It's awful. No, and I can't. tell me if you'll ever I, go I there. I can't. I can't. Yeah. I die. T- it's the worst. Yo, whoever came up with the idea of club, they had to be like out of their fucking mind. Well, clubs didn't used to be like that, though. Clubs used to be fun places. Everyone was dancing. There well, everybody was, no was off that good coke. Yeah, it was, it was the coke. Yeah, there was no sections. It was just cocaine and a dance floor. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a Similar fucking time. vibe. Which is lit. With the light up floor. Yeah, man. There's a place in Chicago I used to go that like born too had late. that essence. It was a club with just open, all light up floor. And it was just that. Everyone was coked out. Y'all was in there. Square, oh, so square biz. Fun. I'm talking love. Y'all were going crazy. I loved it. If they did like a Studio 54 like anniversary, I would do coke. Well, I'd do shrooms there. Just, I don't know. I, I want to feel part of it. But it's not. That's the only only time I think I would do cocaine. But it's not. The Outside of if Rihanna wanted to do coke with me, then I would do coke. <laughs> Why Rihanna? I'm just trying to think of someone that I would do anything for. <laughs> someone I would do anything for. Rihanna could get you to do respectfully, coke? Rocky. I'm sorry. Yeah, Rihanna could get you to do coke. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm all. I'm pretty easy. <laughs> That's what I was getting to next. Like I think that any girl could get you to do coke. No, what? You know how many girls I've hung out with that do coke in front of me, and I'm like, no, I'm cool. Okay, why did you say you was cool? Because I don't like cocaine. Oh, okay. He wasn't trying to beat. It's not Julian. Julian would have been like, thought you'd never ask. That is so not true. What? He used to be. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. No, Julian really doesn't. Like, he's like really separated from Coke. I'm not separate. Separated. I hang out. Everyone I know does Coke. I no, just I mean, don't like, do you it. don't, yeah, you really don't uh, yeah. do it anymore. You know who would kind of be like a, a downer to club with? Who's that? Ryan Garcia. A downer? Yeah, I just feel like, you know, the vibe. I think he would have had a club lit right now. You think? You think? Put him in the DJ booth. To host? Yeah. And tell stories? Exactly. <laughs> Imagine story time at, at the club. If somebody just gets on the mic and tells a story. Imagine thinking you're going to the club with him, but then he takes you to like one of these satanic rituals and you just see little boys get stretched out. I don't think he's going to go back to those. I don't think he's a choice. Well, he's an adult now. And he can fight. Didn't this just happen? Yeah, I think he was this, like, recently. These were, oh, I thought this happened like when he was a kid. No, he wasn't reminiscing. Oh. All right, well, please sure. play the clip for those that don't know. Yeah. Hey, bro. All right, talk to us. Bro, I don't give a fuck, bro. They held me down and they made me watch the little kids get raped. I don't give a fuck anymore. Where? <laughs> Wild question. Valley. Bro, they Ver- fucking yes. took me to the fucking woods, bro, and they fucking tied. I'm not fucking joking, bro. I have fucking proof, bro. I don't give a fuck. Bro, I fucking will show you every fucking video you could ever fucking believe. Bohemian Grove is real. They fucking tied me down. And they made me fucking watch, dog. I absolutely don't give a fuck. And- Here's my thing. I mean, I'm tinfoil hat man and do believe that there is satanic rituals and like they are fucking kids and trafficking them. Mm-hmm. Where I'm not following is that they brought him there against his will, tied him down, but he was still able to keep his phone to get video footage. Yeah. Yeah, that seems, <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, I feel him, but... I'd love to see the proof and how you were able to, to do that. This is the wildest promo for any boxing fight I've ever seen in my life. And also, like, why didn't you just close your eyes? Well, I mean, if you're there, you gotta watch. Do you? I mean, at least to get your bearings of like what is about to happen, and then once you get some context clues and start adding things up, I'd probably start closing my eyes. Um, listen, those places to me definitely exist. I'm not saying it don't it's just something about ryan garcia that i just can't i not saying i don't believe him but i'm not saying that i do believe him i'm kind of like indifferent about this uh here's a guy that's had 230 amateur fights mm-hmm. yeah his head is a. that's a lot of boxing that's a lot of hits that's a lot of you know possible you know brain damage and cte things like that um, but I don't want to, I don't want to step on, you know, like I said, I, 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 I'm not dismissing it and saying, I don't believe him, but I'm not saying that I fully believe everything that he's saying either. He's now, I do love the fact that he spoke about, you know, Tank whooping Devin Haney's ass in the sparring match mm-hmm. and they called him out about it. And he said he had the footage and he put the footage on his YouTube, like to prove to people that he wasn't lying. So, you know, he has good, he has good credit. With saying I have footage and actually providing the footage. Let's say that. But why? 
because I did watch the rest of the clip and I even was going through articles. I couldn't figure out why he was brought, like, who was he hanging out with? Yeah, like, why like, him? Like, was he kidnapped? Like, it just, there wasn't a lot of information yeah, like, that was given for me to be on board, even though I'm usually on board with these type of conspiracies. Yeah, like, Ryan Garcia, to me, is not the A-list boxer. Like, the fact they didn't bring Floyd there. Like, Tank never been there? <laughs> like, like, it's like, I did, it's so many boxers that's bigger than him. That's you know it's, I would think that they would probably try to pull those guys into maybe De La Hoya brought him. Ah, he's uh-huh. isn't he signed to De La Hoya? Ah, uh-huh. I mean he looks and like him. Didn't De La Hoya get caught up in some? Uh, he was found cross dressing in the hotel room, and, you know, getting getting hank, little hanky panky. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, got a little little hanky panky. So, uh, the just cross dressing in your hotel room is hilarious. To me. <laughs> Dolo, I could try them Cavalli's on, kid. <laughs> The the Bohemian Grove, the the place he said he was taken to, is a twenty seven hundred private acre uh, acre campground. It's a gentleman's club, um, and it's you know or the Reagans, uh, the Nixons, all the you know all those people that you would expect. Very uh, trust trustworthy people. Is what the you're most, tr- I mean, trustworthy. Yeah. They ran our country. Pretty yes. trustworthy. Um, and it, you know, it's of course when you're looking at people of of this stature, of this caliber, especially in a private land. Uh, way off in um, Northern California, they just there's always been allegations over time of nasty shit going on with with children. So that's kind of the basis of the uh, the location that we're looking at. Or did he just like was he going to the gentleman's club just like on his own type of shit and like took a wrong left? I don't think you can stumble like your he, way. He into missed the, grove. The, the grown woman area. I I don't know, man. I don't this type of shit. Like I said, I believe it. I know it exists, but. Well, I don't know. Like I've never been, but I'm just saying I'm. I'm pretty sure places like this exist, but I just don't understand why Ryan Garcia is uh, choosing now to disclose all of this and why he's doing it. it. He's saying that he doesn't have his credit cards, he doesn't have access to his Instagram account, but yet he he keeps uploading and tweeting from his account. Like I just don't. I I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I think this is. Um, it's great promotion for the fight. CTE is also a real thing. CTE is a real thing. He's been boxing since he was seven years old. Yeah. yeah. And he, he looks, uh, look, I don't want to put drugs on his jacket, but in these, he's doing, it looks like he's got classic signs of someone that's, you know, sniffling, itching, like twitchy, fidgety, all that shit. Could be the CTE. But, but one could say that the CTE or the drugs is what's making him not be so afraid to, to tell the truth. You, if something like this happens to you on some elitist shit, usually you keep your mouth closed because you know the dangers that can come with you exposing things like that. But if your brain is fucked up or you're on drugs, then maybe you can forget to not tell the truth. I mean, I'm going to give the elites more credit than trusting a possible boxer with CTE and a drug problem into their inner circle. I just think they have better judgment. I don't know if they're picking Ryan Garcia. And, then I just, and another reason I don't understand I just a shit, hunch. I don't know. Because now all of a sudden he's saying he's only talking about boxing from now on. He's only talking about his upcoming fight. It's a wild thing to say after you say yeah, and this the is statement like, before. It's like, bro, all right, man. Like, so what was all of this shit for? They were raping children in the ass, but this fight Sunday. Yeah, but now I'm only oh. talking about my fight. <laughs> it's like, shit. Fuck that fight, man. What, are you, what is this rape you talking about? Like, talk about that. Like, I don't give a fuck about a fight. So this is why I can't really, you know... I, I, I'm trying to, you know, understand Ryan through this, but it's just like a lot of things is pointing to just 230 amateur fights. Yeah, you know, yeah, Jesus. Uh, I just, I'm just like, all right, maybe now. But now, here's the interesting part: the fight with Devin Haney. Yeah. If he goes on and performs well and wins this fight, then we got to get back to the shits, Ryan. But you have to. You got to get back to the Grove. Celebrating the Grove. Tell us what happened. Show us the show us the footage. Pop bottles. And yeah. don't just show me motherfuckers in 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 capes and masks and shit. I want to see who's underneath the motherfucking capes and masks. I think the more pressure is on whoever is hired for that fight to do post game fight commentary and interviews with each of the fighters in the ring afterwards. Because I don't really particularly care about a right hook after Ryan Garcia said that. If gym. I'm in the ring with him and a, a mic post game, was it Jim Lampley? Is that his name? Yeah. Is he still who does that? the post game? Jim the Lampley? post fight? I think it's him, right? He still does it? I think so, yeah. Jim Lampley still does it, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not asking about the third round. I'm asking about the children you saw raped. I don't care about the staccate ad below us. 
<laughs> what what about the kids, Ryan? See, Max Kellerman is the guy for this. God, I miss Max. Max, yeah. Max, Max Kellerman is the guy for this. Joe Rogan would be good at that too. Yeah, but Rogan, Rogan, but see, you, but see, because Rogan is so smart. And, and separate so educated. So well. <laughs> like as soon as Ryan starts talking, and you can't you can't whip Joe Rogan's ass. I see that's the other part. Of nah, he, it. A lot of these a lot of these guys that are doing like commentary. Well, the, the rest of us can't whoop Joe Rogan's ass. Bro. Ryan Garcia but cannot whoop Joe that Rogan's he ass. Interviews. Ryan an Garcia fan. cannot whoop Joe Rogan's ass. Let's just put that out there. I'm just letting y'all know that yeah, right I'm, now. I'm, Ryan Garcia cannot whoop Joe Rogan's he can ass. Box him today. Whoop his ass. I'm saying. I'm being very specific yeah. with my words here. I'm, I'm with you. Okay. Ryan Garcia. Now, if Joe Rogan walked up to Ryan Garcia and starts talking to him and starts trying to figure out all of this shit that he's talking about, and then Joe Rogan starts to smell bullshit, and he says, ah, I think you're lying. I think you're... And then Ryan starts talking spicy. Yeah. He's going to he quickly... He has a short temper, Ryan. He could have as short as a temper as he want. <laughs> but Joe, let me... Joe, Joe Rogan to kick that nigga in the next Thursday. You ever see Joe Rogan kick? <laughs> like no, I've seen Joe Rogan do a comedy set chug a Bud Light and then do a crane kick. So yeah. Bro, have you seen Joe Rogan kick a... Pull up Joe Rogan kicking a, a, a punching bag. Oh, it's wild. They said it sounds like gunshot. Bro, that just sounds like... <laughs> bro. Every rib is shattered. Somebody kicking you like that? Like, look at Joe Rogan, bro. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody kick you like that, you're going to be shitting for three summers, man. Straight. I don't think you'll ever shit again. Dude. Yeah, like blood. <laughs> it's going to be blood in the toilet bowl. He and I think uh, financially would probably be better. Not that Joe needs the money, but uh, a better look for him to not have that moment ringside and just have him on the podcast. Just do that shit in your podcast. Be like, yeah. Oh, I think Rogan it. definitely already reached out and set it up. Whatever you do, Ryan, God, don't go to Club Shay Shay with. I, but I was about to say, I was about to say, Shannon Sharp <laughs> nah, might be the nah, best to put nah, in that ring. Nah, what about them nah, kids? Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. Nah, nah, what about them what kids? Do you mean? No, no. Shannon Sharp is not no. that great of an interviewer. No, I, 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 I love Shannon. So were they being Sharp raped in their booty? Now, Skip, where's Bohemian Grove? <laughs> That was anti-black. That's fucking Shannon Sharp. I love but Shannon Sharp, but, but Ryan, stay. Don't go. Don't take your ass to Club Shay Shay. Please don't. Uh, staying on the. Um, conspiracy train within the industry. Did you guys see this clip from this comedian, Nima Yamini? Mm -mm. He was, uh, he took this video pretty much saying that he was, uh, proposed internet fame. And it was, he was in a room with two Hollywood executives and the fellow comedian, Matt Reif. And he said that they both had to suck off the executives in order to get the contract. Nice. Um, and they had to suck them off simultaneously in that room. Yamini claims that he left the room and Matt stayed. Sure he did. Well, and Matt stayed, and now you've seen where Matt's Rife's career has gone. So now people are speculating that not only did Matt get his whole face redone, but he also deep throated a couple executives in the process. Again, I'm the conspiracy <laughs> guy, but I don't believe this. I just don't. Well, why wouldn't you believe it? <laughs> it's too trusting. Like to just have two regular comics come into your office and you'd be like, yo, suck my dick to get this contract. I just. People that are yeah, that I don't elite think go like that. I'm not yeah, saying- Yeah, are not that trusting. Now listen, I'm not saying that some executives don't. Oh, it happens. Hang I'm that like, over yeah, people's have heads. Have not heard of the whole Me Too movie? No, no, listen, like, listen. I get, I'm not saying it. I'm just saying I don't think it happens like that. Yes. That's all I'm saying. I don't think it goes that way, the way he's saying it went. I don't think that's how it, that's how it goes. That's all I'm saying. I, it happens for sure. 100%. I'm not that- We, we don't have any room to, to debate that anymore. We know that it happens. But I just don't think it happens like that. So y'all think he a hater? No, nah, I just think that, you know, I think this is a moment and, you it's know. It's a metaphor. People are, <laughs> metaphor is crazy. <laughs> and people are just jumping in on. For what, Rory? Trying to, it's. The same way Cat Williams said him and Ludacris walked into the same office. And, and Luda, Luda sucked the dick and Cat walked out. Yeah, see like. It was a metaphor to say that he was with. Going full industry and I saw I saw fast I saw fast seven. Luda ain't suck no dick to get that role. <laughs> Definitely didn't. <laughs> and if that, he did, he did a bad that, bad job. Yeah, of, we not gonna put that on Luda's jacket. No, head, Luda, head game is whack. We not I putting was that say, on. They we always assume like in, 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 if these are true, let's carry this through. If it's true, Matt Rife went on to sell out an arena tour, which means he must give the fire's top of all time. And then Luda, Fast Furious series, you're making like fifty million a pop. Fire head. What if you're a guy and you got this proposal and you should you just give trash head? Do you that, still that, get blessed with the career? But that's another thing too. Like, <laughs> look what Julian's mind. No, I, I'm true, with though. him because even as the exec, like, I'm pro I'm asking two straight comedians to suck my dick. They're probably gonna be bad at it. Like, they don't suck dick. 
Mm-hmm. What like what's where's the fun in that? Well, to be fair, they said that men give the best head because y'all got stronger jaws than us. Yeah, gay men, mm-hmm. men I mean, that it, like sucking dick. No, all men have stronger jaws than women. Okay, no, that statement is true. That's what, what I'm you saying. Said, they say that men are better at sucking dick, whether they're gay, gay or whatever. Whoever's sucking the dicks, fuck, are better at sucking dick than women because of this jaw structure. I mean, look at Matt's jaw. Yeah, he looks like he probably gets fired. He probably took both execs at once. Left pocket, right pocket. Where he looks like he said, "That's it." Like, like <laughs> he's like, "More, <laughs> give me more." <laughs> Who else has a dick in the hallway? Sucking off the assistants. <laughs> I just don't know if an exec is going to put it all on the line to ask a kid that was like just on wild and out to suck his dick <laughs> to, to get a contract. Yeah, I, that's like a- to, to what you were saying with the Me Too shit. Of course, I think like execs sexually harass their secretaries like that's just common unfortunately in the workplace Mm -hmm. drastically different to ask a sort of known comedian to suck my dick to get a contract (laughs) like that's crazy like i just don't see that happening (laughs) yeah i this this i know we're in the what they calling us the expose uh movement expose year year of exposing i don't know whatever they're calling it now i don't know i get it but a lot of like i said a lot of this shit that's going to be coming out is like, y'all fucking it up because there's real stories mixed in with a lot of this bullshit. Yeah. And that's the fucked up part. Didn't we do our London show the same weekend as him? No, uh, it wasn't. Ch- it was Chappelle. I don't think Matt was out there with us. His poster was like right next to ours in the oh, hallway. Oh, yes. He was. Yes. Uh, accusations on us. How, how did we get that gig? Mm. Ain't no accusations on us. We know how we got that. Well, they would have to bring in four execs. I if it's so, two. UTA. So we, we know how we got that now. Y'all can go ask yeah. somebody, but UTA, what they did and, for us ooh. to get that game. I can guarantee you, Rich Paul never asked Mohan and I to do anything in a meeting or on a Zoom call. Hell no. Nah. We don't, ain't playing that game over here. Niggas will die. Except for when they were like, you guys should do three pods a week. And I said, you can suck my dick. <laughs> Reverse head. <laughs> Reverse head. Reverse head. Suck, mine. Suck my dick for that third episode. Yeah. yeah. Higher than a Patreon tier. Um, but yeah, I I don't believe that. And also, like, if you left the room, how do you know what Matt did? Just because he has a successful career now? What, what if what if he walked out of the room and then the execs were like, joking, you guys are comedians, ha ha. Well, he left. <laughs> well, he left. He's not yeah, really down. Your, no, we don't want you to suck our dick. Here, here's some money. <laughs> like, let's, let's do the Joking, ha ha, LOL. Here's three dates at MSG. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sold out already. Yeah. And as someone that like does believe that there are quote unquote machines that can push a button and get people to superstardom, just for some head and it's like, I'll get you the garden. Like, who is this guy? Yeah. I'd love to meet him. It's mad head around, honestly. I was going to say, like, is head worth the garden? And like, is that guy going to use his MSG favor just for, just for like, for some guy some head? head? Yeah. Guy head. Stra- sh- not even just a guy, a straight guy. <laughs> guy head. <laughs> guy head. And I feel What's like guy head. I feel like the exec <laughs> that wants head from comedians to then push the button and get them sold out weeks in MSG isn't like scouring through while and out footage to find talent. You know how trusting you gotta be to put your dick in a nigga mouth that don't really want to suck it? <laughs> You make a very fair point. You know how crazy that is? You make a fair yeah, point. Yeah, but it's like, yo, you want this role? Yo, give me head. And he's like, all right. You, and you actually back it out and, and pull. <laughs> I wish one of you niggas would. I'll come out that office with two dicks in my hand. Wait, hey, fuck yo. all you execs. No, you I'll bite. Off. Hell yeah. So that means you'd put a dick in your mouth. You're mad gay. And you didn't get the role. <laughs> Fuck that role. And it's an assault charge. your lips for nothing. <laughs> but imagine that though. Lips and broke. But imagine, imagine when a nigga be like, yo, he made me suck his dick. What? What you mean he made you suck his dick? Yeah, it's called crazy. rape. That don't even sound... <laughs> without a gun? Nobody can't make you suck their dick without a gun, bro. Uh, Who can make you suck... Man, if you're a man, please leave. If you're a man. Out of this. If you're a man. If you're a man and a dude says, yo, give me some ass. Oh. Uh, even with the gun, I don't think you can get me to do it. <laughs> I'm dead. Rory, Rory, if you want to die, you anyway. gotta kill me. Take me right? out of misery. Because the moment, like, I would put my mouth on the dick, I would look up and be like, "Just pull the trigger." At this point, bro, you gotta kill me. <laughs> Getting shot with a dick in your mouth is crazy. Because <laughs> <laughs> what if the bullet goes through and I hey, shoot my dickhead? Hey, off? if I die with a dick in my mouth, not, y'all don't gotta come to my funeral. No. 
I didn't plan on it. Yeah, y'all ain't got to come. Y'all can just stay home and just laugh. Like, yo, this nigga mall went out crazy. <laughs> he had a dick in his mouth. Like, what the fuck? Because <laughs> you know they got to leave you there until forensics come. To- That's crazy. And the niggas got the photos. You know for sure one of these podcasts niggas that don't like me going to get a hand on them photos. Oh, oh my God. I'm going to get a hand on the photos. Yeah. They can't wait. Patreon. <laughs> well, they can't. <laughs> That'll be a whole separate tier. Yeah, y'all fucked up. It's on Patreon, my forensic crime scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. dinner with Jay and then forensics with Maul. That's, That's the <laughs> look where his head is at. That's crazy. I wish somebody would try to force me to give them head though. <laughs> for, for a, a skit? Role? Can we do that for a skit? That'd be fun. That, like fuck, what? I just that's why I don't believe. How do you see shit. the blocking on that sketch? For a Maul's skit. hat. <laughs> <laughs> How do you want to light that? <laughs> <laughs> How do you want to light it? <laughs> where are we shooting at? Hey, Ralph, where are we shooting that at? Fuck and I already don't me. like my odds in this sketch because the, it's a duo. <laughs> so there's only one role left. Yo, that's crazy. Yeah, man. you got to be the, yeah. It, it, it would be my dick. What? Huh? Yo, y'all you gotta, gay. You y'all gotta, are gay. So, okay, with voicemail? Like, was, what? I haven't been letting y'all get your shit off, but y'all are gay as hell. Well, what, what I'm, I'm, I'm against it. How does that make me gay? <laughs> And I'm the aggressor. I'm more of the masculine one. But you're still gay, though. No. You're, like, you're, you're gay for it? sucking dick. I'm just getting my dick sucked. <laughs> How? I said I wouldn't do that. I would never do no shit like that. You crazy? Kill me. T- give me death. I take death. Like Brave heart over here. <laughs> give me death. Kill me. <laughs> All right, Mel Gibson. Kill 100%. Me. Give me death. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and that's not homophobic. Shouts to everyone that can do it. It's just something that... I'm just not a. I've never tried and yeah, failed. Like, it's just something I know suckers, I can't my do. My real eaters out there. Who? I, well, could you imagine if you if you were a guy? And... Shout out to who? All my dick suckers, all the real eaters that, out there. Why are you shouting shouting out dick? Because he he shouted them out first. No, he, I don't think Rory did that. I didn't, but shout out to. We're not shouting out dick suckers Hashtag on my platform. Dick suckers. Not... You don't like to get your dick sucked. By women, yes. So I never said it shout, yeah, male and women, male and women dick Oh, suckers. I thought you was. Oh, see, you didn't shout say out that. To all the dick yeah. suckers. I just said all the people who suck dick. No, you yeah. said. Dick I think it's suckers. funnier that you keep doing this when you say it. You said okay. Well, you did say dick. I feel like their hand size should be different. For who? Go to Rory. <laughs> That's sick. No, I'm just doing a dance. That's, That's the, what was that dance called? <laughs> What was that dance called? You what know what that dance Dick called. sucking dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dick sucking dance. <laughs> it's a TikTok challenge. I love immaturity. <laughs> do we have another voicemail? Oh, shit. Do we want to get into this Nelly topic or do that on Patreon? Nelly ain't writing none of his raps. I don't want to get into none of Nelly topic. Ooh, I'm with you. Mark broke broke my heart. That. Damn. I'm just saying. Once you ain't write your raps, I don't know what we talking about. That came and went. We owe Drake an apology. Because there was proof that Nelly didn't write anything and we just moved on to the next day. Well, because Nelly isn't currently active in putting out music. So that's why people didn't really. Was it proof that, that he didn't write anything or that he didn't write some of his hit songs? A, a good majority. A great. It was like most of country grammar, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Great album. Whoever and a that. lot of Nellyville as well. That shit kind of broke my heart. Though. I'm going to keep it 100. Oh, for me, it definitely did. Because Nelly was, a, he was like the, he was a, he was a star. So for, to hear that he didn't write a lot of it those and then, and, yeah, then shit on, and then shit on the crew, the niggas that was writing it, at least take care of the bros that wrote the shit. Yes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, at least let them be well off and they ain't by living life comfortable. Like, then it's like, okay, fuck it. It was a collab, because then we can call it a collaborative effort. But when you're the only niggas still lit and the homies are sitting down with Vlad telling their stories. And I feel, I mean, he sort of tried because he, he put the St. Lunatics on like kind of immediately. Just the specific guy that was really writing most of it. Mm-hmm. I don't think he looked out for it the best. Like Murphy Lee was out for a minute. Yeah, he was. He, tra- he tried. Yeah, I guess. But just not giving you a man publishing that wrote everything is fucking nuts. So that's what I'm speaking to. I'm <laughs> like, that insane. part of it. That's the wild part. But fuck it, yes. Let's, let's listen to what Nelly had to say. He was on the episode of The Shop. Um, so let's hear what he was talking about. When I put out songs, I had to go against DMX, True. Jay-Z, True. Eminem, True. Lil Wayne, True. 50 Cent, True. Loda, True. Nah, yeah. All of us are fighting yeah, for right. one spot. So in t- from, two, from 99 to like 2008, 10, it's the hardest era what ever do, to get rap. You this M-Pimp juice it up. I mean, he didn't have to deal with Taylor Swift, though. I mean, honestly. That's a fact. No, he has a, he has a point, though. I fully agree with Nelly here. That yeah. era when it came to mainstream rap was the most difficult 
to compete. No, Nelly was a bona fide star, a pop star, for sure. Um, he left out Kanye. Well, yeah. That was towards the end, but he yeah. still had to compete with Con- uh, yeah, Kanye. Very true. Um, but Nelly, without a doubt, his run, uh, what he was able to do with his first few albums, legendary. Um, we haven't seen many people come from rap and do what Nelly was able to do, sell the amount of records he was able to sell, have the uh, the hit records that he had. Um, he even had a cool little country record at one point. Uh, with Tim McGraw. Yeah. That was a beautiful song. Yeah. And um, what's the, Ride With Me? What was on um, Country Grammar? There's another country song in there that, that's great. The Over yeah, and Over was the, the Tim McGraw record. That record. That was beautiful. a good song. It's a great song. I'm yeah, thinking about it. Over and over. Um, that was on that up, suit um, album. Pull up rap albums in 1998. I think that was the year. Of uh, which one? That was just crazy. I mean, here you go. Black Star. Equemini, 400 volume Degrees, uh, Volume 2, Capital Punishment. Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood, and It's Dark and Hell is Hot. Yeah. Yeah, this was a tough year. Capital Punishment. Uh, Miseducation. <laughs> yeah, Don 98 Pagina. was a tough year. But obviously it doesn't count as like an era. Whereas Nelly had to do that for like seven years. He had to compete with all those guys. The locks. Yeah, that that run, that early two thousands run, was very difficult for hip hop. Yeah. I mean, I, I even like the how you know Death wasn't Row. outside. I, I was a consumer. You was six. No, how old were you in ninety eight? Six and a half. Ninety eight. I was yes, six and a half. Six and three. Quarters. You were not a consumer in ninety eight. Shut the fuck up. See, that's what's wrong he, with this new generation. He, he did his chores, and I was a consumer. No, you were not. Okay, Maul, but I still listen <laughs> to the music. <laughs> You were not listening to Capital Punishment. I was outside. You was not outside. Not, what the fuck are you talking about? You're gonna say that. You fucking won. Okay. I also was not. I was four, but I also was not. Yeah. But also I was because my dad was a DJ, but I know you weren't listening to that shit. I was in yes. high school trying to avoid the bloods cutting my face every Friday. I I, I stole what that pain is like my cousin's volume two, and he purchased it in like ninety nine. How old was you? I was eight. Bro, I was eight. I, de- was, I was listening to volume two at nine years old. I'm positive. Fuck Same. no. Swear to God. Hell no. The first album, I, I didn't buy it, obviously. You didn't listen to volume two in 98. Maybe I wasn't listening to the, to the B-sides, but yeah, I was listening to volume two in 99. I'm, I'm positive because I've went crazy. through this with my older cousins. Have, was I listening to rap at nine years old? No, rap wasn't as mainstream when you were nine as it was for me. Yeah. I was listening to More Money, More Problems on the radio when I was seven. It wasn't by choice, but it was mainstream music. That's crazy. The radio, we had really good I wasn't good like dissecting rap. it like, you know, oh, I really feel what he's saying. The more, <laughs> well, money, the more money you get. Yeah, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't relate to it. <laughs> no, but it was, it was part of my childhood. I mean, I guess I was, I was listening to, I would guess I was listening to rap at seven, eight, nine years old for sure. I was. I was listening to Ice Cube, N.W.A., like, you don't think a nine-year-old was listening to an Annie sample? Yeah. I get it. I just had to think about what was I doing at a nine, and I definitely was. I wasn't, like, listening to a week ago and was like, damn, he snitched. Mm. Damn, he <laughs> snitched. <laughs> like, no, I was listening to Hard Knock Life. <laughs> it's crazy to think that I've been listening to, like, oh, a, a part of the culture this long. Oh, and Money Cash Hoes we loved because it had so much cursing. Money Cash Hoes is still one of my favorite Money Jay-Z Cash songs. Ho. To this day. Damn, y'all was so young, man. Oh, money ain't a thing. I was definitely listening to at nine for sure. Mo money. Vo- Mo volume three. Was big I went amongst the kids with my yeah, mom. That was everywhere. For that kids, was my birthday yeah. present. Like I went. It was to get volume three, and then I convinced <laughs> my dad to get me. And there was a- <coughs> for your birthday present. You got volume three. Yeah, but like I asked my mom to go get it. That's sick. And convinced my dad to get me. And there was X. Got two CDs. Damn. Your parents actually bought that music for you? White privilege. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yo, I had to sneak. I keep telling you, I had to sneak. Oh, they were the editors. To right? listen to fucking Doggy Style. The Doggy Style album. Snoop Source album. I had to sneak. I had to listen to that shit in my room on my Walkman with the volume on low so I could hear my mom if she was coming to my door. So my mom- like, This is Snoop I was, I'm talking about. I still like, you know when you took your CDs and put them onto your iTunes? Mm-hmm. Like I still have in my iTunes the edited version of Volume 3 and there was X. They bought me the edited version. Oh, now, so no speaking of Nelly, 
I had my cousin buy me the Country Grammar album, Explicit, and my mom caught me listening to the second song. Like, you can find me in San Luis, they know they don't got jobs, some say, yeah, others just fucking smoke all day. My mom snapped the CD in half in two seconds. <laughs> snapped it in half. I was like, I have like trauma. He was like, Ma, that shit was banging. Why you <laughs> that shit was banging. That shit was thumping. Like, he was getting it. Oh, I was on. so disappointed. <laughs> oh. That's crazy to think that our parents didn't want us to listen to this music. And now Snoop is like one of my mom's favorite people in the world. She but it's me. crazy because like if you listen to the R&B, like when I was young, my dad was always like playing like, you know, the Isley Brothers and, and that kind of stuff. Like the lyrics on that records are just as vulgar. They're just over, Insane. like they're just over a more peaceful. Well, listen, I can, I can fully I can play, understand it when you're a kid. It just I could play like... Snoop's whole doggy style album right now and play one of these new little young drill niggas album right now. And that shit will make the doggy style album oh, sound like yeah. it's a peace tree. Like a, a peace tree. Like a, yeah. It sounds like a, a I don't know. preschool. It sounds like a, it will ain't make no it sound like a fucking yeah. a UN meeting. Are ain't, you ain't no fun unless the homies have some is essentially about gang rape. Yeah. I <laughs> so, get it. But in the way he said it, he was though, only 19. Now these young niggas are saying, yo, let my man fuck. And these girls are like, bet. <laughs> <laughs> that well, that part too. But it's just a, it's just crazy to think yeah, the at least music that earn it. The music the music that I we had said, to put parental advisory on on the on the CD. Mm-hmm. Now the content of some of these new artists and their albums is like is way worse than that shit was. Like I'm talking about, it's not even close. I don't know Eminem. I shouldn't have been listening to Slim or Marshall Mathers LP when I was 11. No. I knew every every word. Well, yeah, that was a different type of content for you young white kids that was like y'all we felt leader. seen yeah that was y'all leader fuck my mom yeah Eminem fuck my leader. mom <laughs> fucking make me clean my fucking room it's my room julian just shut up just don't just, just, just shut up i'm not gonna go down that road yeah just shut up all right just you empowered know, every white kid Eminem. that hated their mother he went just like this as soon as i say Eminem, his fist balled up <laughs> like, <laughs> like arthur yeah, like yo chill bro i understand you don't like Eminem. I but julian Kim is a beautiful r&b love song though yeah. All right, go ahead first. Julian's <laughs> po- Julian's point about R and B being like worse because I remember my dad was a DJ. He was obsessed with rap. He played a lot of rap in the house. So I never I never had to go buy the CDs. I always had them in my house. Like DMX. I growing up DMX, Jay Z. They were my favorite artists because my they were my dad's favorite artists. He played them so much. But he put me. I remember being obsessed with Britney Spears, and he said, "Oh no, you're not gonna worship." A uh, like mid white woman, like here, here's Janet Jackson. And you, can, people. you can go become obsessed with Janet Jackson. But at seven years old, the shit that I was listening to listening to Janet talk about affected me way more than and then there was X mm-hmm. or fucking. That's why you had a Black threesome album. at 21. Mm. <laughs> Probably. Like, no, like real shit. I had no business listening to that. And I don't think he. You know how when you hear singles from artists, you don't really pay attention to like the lyrics like that. He wasn't, I was listening to the the B-sides and the deep cuts. And I don't think he knew just how vulgar that it, fucking music was. When it came to like sexually explicit lyrics, puberty was way bigger of a factor when it came to me than listening to music about fucking. Now, misogyny ah. definitely was taught to me through music for sure. Like I was just trying to, why was I thinking fuck bitches get money at 14? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, she's just a hoe. She's 14. <laughs> I, I, it's like I, why am I viewing a woman that way at 14 years old I feel like music for me did last I have a minimum wage job and that woman is just discovering her body South Park was way more of an influence on me in a, in a negative way in terms of like you know racial jokes and all that shit South Park was so much more influential you are a walking South Park extra yeah. Now that you say that, I can I can see it. I still love South Park. Like the new shit they've been putting, they signed like a billion dollar contract. They're still pumping out content, but it's it's still great. But yeah, South Park was big for me when I was a kid. And I couldn't watch it at home for a while. But my older cousin, when we would go to their house, he was allowed to watch it. Cause he's like eight years older than I was. Mm-hmm. And I would just watch it with him and then just repeat every joke. And it was just the most fucked up shit. You are a South Park baby. It's great. Mm-hmm. I see it. Like, Shitty walk. You know, he looked like sense. he looked like he dressed as Mr. Hanky for Halloween. That's crazy. Cause you did. did. That's racist. Why? I didn't you see he dressed as chef. Is? <laughs> this is Mr. Hanky was a Christmas a poo. Mr. Hanky was a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> that lived. That lived. That in was anti black. He lived in a Jewish kid's toilet. Only black people shit. Yeah. Why is this racist? Rory said I look like a piece of shit. 
In a racist way, not like in a dress way. Oh, I mean, if my racism directed just at Julian and him only, mm-hmm. not to a whole race of people. Right, no, I felt Oh, like, okay. All right, yeah. cool. I mean, yeah. I didn't feel like you were talking about my people. No. no oh, no, okay. No. Well, in that case, that's fine. Yeah, Actually, yeah. people in general, I'm not talking about. Just yeah, one just person. One person. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hank. That piece of shit there. over there. <laughs> Do you, South Park or Family Guy? Oh, it's not even close. Uh, South Park. Seriously? I don't know, man. Yeah, you yeah, answered that they too fuck, quick. They bugging. You I love Family Guy, but... Yeah, but you answered that too quick. That's like when Damaris, when I, said Brent, when I said Brent or uh, or Bryson. Bryson, Damaris, yeah. yeah I, Damaris answered that way too fast. You know what I think? I honestly was thinking about which one I would fuck, honestly. But music-wise, yeah, it is I like close. your honesty. I respect that, but no. why we just can't be... Just, just music. Oh, okay. I just thought... If I go to ask you about two bad bitches, your first mind, you ain't going to, oh, who does the better hook? Oh, like, do they no. sing? No, yeah, what are we saying. talking about? Like, the better candle. Yeah, <laughs> like, who wears a better bikini, uh, Drea? Like, yeah. what the fuck you want me to say? Like, but I was talking about Brent or Bryson as far as, like, their music. And you answered that too fast. If I say Rihanna, Rihanna or Beyonce, the first thing you're going to think is, damn, like, who really gets me up and moving? Like, no. That wasn't what the fuck you was gonna. If you said Rihanna about. or Beyonce, their looks or who I would fuck honestly is not the first thing I'm thinking of. I'm thinking you're at, at all. music. Well, because they're also ex- extremely talented. Yeah, I feel like they've. Bryson ain't it. released the fucking album in years. Yes, he. Bryson still on tour. Oh, she's Bryson. been disrespecting this. He's still on tour. I love. I picked Bryson, and I love his new song. <laughs> that whatever she wants song is literally engraved in my fucking. Oh brain. my! Every time I open my fucking Instagram, one of you chicks got that song. I love. Wait, I'm, I'm excited for for God Bryson's comeback. Damn. When he said she pissed me off somehow, she still get whatever she want. That was a fucking soliloquy. That wasn't a soliloquy. That was a trick trying to a fucking cover his PTSD of him losing a girl to a nigga that got more money than him. Mm. Mm. That's all. Then he just isn't he going through like a divorce? I don't think it's because <clears throat> of finance. I think they might finance. still be together. She posted on TikTok dancing to the song and mouthing it the other day. He tore her ass apart on that Keanu Lede album. Yeah, oh, I yeah. thought she was about to go somewhere else. I was about to say, how do you know that? I'm sure he fucks his wife, but that's not what I'm not saying. Not, <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> like, well, how do you have that? I think they have a child. <laughs> how do you have that information? Like, whoa. No, his verse on Keanu Lede's <laughs> quietly was one of my favorite verses last year, and he tore his wife apart on that. That record that must have been an awkward like mixing session if she was there. Oh, I doubt it. I doubt His it. new record is dope though. I love that. Yeah, I'm excited. Song. But I'm I just excited didn't... for him. Everybody was talking about him because in the video, you know, when I first heard the song and then saw the video, he had like a ski mask on the entire video. There's strippers all over, and everybody just kind of had the same. Everybody was just like, "This isn't you. Like, why are you doing this? Why are you acting like a drill rapper?" And then, but the song though, mm. like. Come on, now you can, you're never going to go wrong on Instagram telling bitches they can get whatever they want. That's just the hook. Whatever she want. That's fucking classic. Good hook. Automatic classic. Whatever she want. Women don't want to do shit. What y'all want to do? Like, what, As women, what do y'all want to do? Like, what is, your, what is your goal every day? If you could do something every day of your life, what would it be? They want to be children. Sleep. It would literally. Sleep, wake up, cook, have sex with my husband, sleep. Go out with my friends, have lemon drop martinis, sleep, real That book. sounds awful. I, could you do that for more than a month? No. <laughs> no I could do that can. every day of my fucking life. No, you life. cannot. You'd get bored. You would fucking kill yourself in two months doing that every day. Let's do an experiment. I can't, <laughs> I can't go on a vacation for more than four days. No. I'm like, I, I want to go home. Let's try it out. No, literally. Let's well, it do depends on where you're at. If Give I'm on a three beach, pay, I can stay. I'll go days. away and I'll go do all of that for three months. Let's see if I can You'll be. It. You'll get married in three months? Yes. I figure it out. No, go ahead. What you figure out? What's the sign? But what you need to get paid for? You don't know how to spend no money. No, you yeah. Just... If you married now, that's yeah. he's your responsibility, not us. See, that's not the experiment. Y'all don't want to put it on the experiment. So you want to get paid mm-hmm. to get fucked, to get fucked, and sleep and cook. It's called an escort. <laughs> <laughs> Escorts don't cook. If you some do, if you pay enough. You pay him to leave. I'm like, here's fifteen hundred. Make me some chicken wings, fried rice. They're like, okay, I'll go get it. I was like, what escort service you using? Atlanta. Instagram? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> that's the best one. Instagram. Yeah, Lincoln bio. Yeah. yeah. Can read I think that that's so unfair because if you guys had the opportunity to not, if you didn't have to work, what would you do? If you didn't have to work, if money was not an option, what would you do? Probably find something to work at. Go be a fly on the wall work in the studio. On. You got to find something to do. You can't just spend your, your every day sleeping, eating, fucking sleeping, eating, fucking. I said reading. I said hanging <laughs> oh, out with my... Whoa, okay, reading. Throw reading in there. 
Yeah, it's reading, cooking. I would still do a lot family, of the stuff that I do. Hanging yeah. with my friends. I would still, if I hit the lotto for a billion dollars, I would still podcast. Yeah. Probably not the same clip that we do, but I would definitely still podcast. You would still podcast if you hit the lotto for a billion dollars. 100%. I would. I would. I would. That, that's when it's, that's I like when, voicing my opinion on shit and talking to people. That's yeah. when podcasting becomes and really. I get rid of the edit button. Oh, and we would. It, it'd be four red button. cameras right here. We, yeah. We'd look amazing. This would be. This would look like the wire. Are <laughs> 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 you fucking kidding me? I'm like, we even higher, man. Go get six color. red cameras and two drones in this motherfucker. We Yo, gonna make having a shit. drone above you for a whole pod would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> we gonna make. We gonna turn this shit into a motion. An aerial angle is yeah. Crazy. <laughs> I would get James Cameron to direct with Rail. Man, mm. we'll be shooting at the, at the, the Taj Mahal, all kind of shit. Yeah, I wouldn't want to like go to Africa, maybe like help build all of that schools, shit. go all to of Cuba, that. help yeah. build hospitals. Like you wouldn't. Let's do all of that. Man, let's sit down and talk about it. I like the sentiment. I just don't know if I'm the person that should build the hospitals. Well, I wouldn't be. I don't have much experience. I'm not, yeah, I would. I would get with a company and try to facilitate Listen, that. Well, yeah, I, I donate. You don't to actually. No, I don't need you uh, laying like, cement. Wait, so my but, judgment is clearly not that good. But oh, yeah, you would go there and you would, you know, help. Put my faith in Wyclef. Oh, yeah, Wycliffe got your money. He bought a new motorcycle with your money. And didn't buy pants. No. Baby oil <laughs> and Speedos. Yo, find out your money went to baby oil and Speedos. That would be so tight. No, that's what's going. I'm going to audit uh, TLC. The group? I want my $10 back. What $10? Like the group? Yeah. That's a 3% of yeah. you talking. Why? Because they did a, a <laughs> GoFundMe for their album and reached like a million dollars and never put it out. Oh, okay, yeah. I do remember that. No, maybe that, maybe that wasn't enough. Why don't we do that strategy for your next project? Start a GoFundMe. I don't know. Because you would put out an album, but I why not just an, take out You money? can't do shit I ask like listeners that. for enough as far as Patreon and merch. Nah, now but this now is I want music. you to fund. So I'm going to go, go take a check from STEM for a recording budget, but ask money for, from the fans. <laughs> yeah. Have them match it. The government does it all the time. I wish I was a scumbag. I wish I had an well, interview be to be rich. a scumbag. Because that is really a viable option. Like, I could go, nobody would know if I really took a full recording budget of a quarter million dollars. And then people would have faith in me to do some type of crowd funded thing for my album. Mm. I feel you. Not knowing that I just went and grabbed a quarter million for it. Yeah. I wish I was a scumbag. I, Me, meanwhile, I'm putting out affordable slides. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's just not, I, I can't do shit. My like fleece that. is $80. I can't take advantage of people. I just can't. I feel whack. Like, it's only 3%. I just I feel whack. There's just something internally where I'm just like that. That's corny. Yeah. Like taking advantage. It's just it's it's corny. That's why when I see people do it, huh. I'm just like. And sometimes I'm like, damn, I wish I had some of that in me, like to be like that. Because I do think you need a certain level of scumbagism to get yeah. to certain levels. Yeah. But I I just can't. Like it's certain shit. I'm just like, nah, I can't do that, bro. Like I've been offered to do some not suck no dick, but. To do some crazy shit to come up on some money. And I'm just like, nah, that's corny. That's first of all, it, it catches up to you. Yeah. Number one. You might get it off now, two, three years, like, all right, it's cool. You're gonna get an email. It only it, it only catches up to mid-level scumbags. Elite scumbags are doing fine. Well, it'll if, never catch up to them. Yeah, but I'm not one of the elitists. I th- well, I think, yeah, like maybe in when they die and go to hell at me. Whatever you think hell is, then it'll catch up with them. But it's only mid-level scumbags where that karma really catches you in real time. I was watching something a scientist was saying that life, and y'all know how I always say this is a simulation. And he basically said this is pretty much he's on the side of this life experience being a simulation. Like somebody is controlling all of this. Yeah. Like we're we're in somebody else's Video world. Game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bill Gates. Maybe. I wish I was scumbag enough to like create a disease because I have s- stock in a company that's going to create the vaccine. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's big scumbag. Like, I wish, I wish. That's I when the other scumbags look at you like, ooh, he's on a roll. <laughs> he like, ate that. Like, how the fuck no, he no. Ca- how he came up with that one? Like, I'm just spitballing here. Like, I wish I could fly a plane into a building because mm. I own half of Halliburton. Mm. Just a random, just throwing out. Right it's like what uh, Pelosi did with her, uh, her husband. Who's uh who's in construction and he was getting all these covered contracts for these properties because she was feeding mm. them the so like government. Yeah, no, it's just like a that's like a list like I don't think that's scumbag, scumbag though. Scumbag. Yeah, it's illegal. 
Uh, okay, just because something illegal. is illegal doesn't make it. I don't think that's scumbag. But she's shit. holding a very high office in the government, and that's an illegal activity. I think that's illegal. She put all right, her but let's and then she let's got all get fake, off our moral fucking tits. high ground. Because like, if I'm Hunter she Biden, she I'm doing everything Hunter heavies. Biden. Yeah. My dad is Joe Biden. I, yeah, I'm gonna go to China and use his name. <laughs> well, they funny. they sent him there to get him the fuck out of the country because they knew how much of a danger he was here. <laughs> that's how you know you're that big of a scumbag. If you look. What their activity is here is fucking children and like doing all these sacrifice ceremonies. You're not even welcome there because that's how crazy you are. Yeah. You can't just chill and fuck kids, bro. You got to do heroin and like do all this other weird shit. Yeah. The, the crackhead fucking up the vibe at the child fucking. Come on, bro. Just, is just a fuck weird. the kid. Why are you doing all the crack? Yo. No. How about just do the crack and not fuck the kid? Yeah, I'm, I'm with that. No, because he's in the circle. Dude, you're born into that shit. I, I, you grew, up, him to I grew up a lot of crack. I grew up a lot around a lot of crackheads, and they don't have that. Act, they don't have Biden kids. access. Yo, throwing an intervention for somebody when you fuck children, crazy. <laughs> but the intervention <laughs> hey, is hey, man, trying put to the pipe to down. Only fuck kids. <laughs> Change your ways. <laughs> this is getting out of hand, <laughs> sir. Your behavior is affecting all of us. <laughs> just fuck the kids. <laughs> Stop doing crack. The rules that you have to be sober to walk into the kid fucking party is <laughs> do that sober. And if you try not to look, they force you to look. <laughs> and you can fight. Yeah, and I'm a boxer. Who held down Ryan Garcia? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> Mitch McConnell. <laughs> Who was <laughs> Joe? Because I don't think the elites are in shape. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Rogan. Rogan held him down <laughs> with one leg, <laughs> one foot. How did he get that Spotify contract? His- he stood on his back to stay there and look and enjoy. Take this DMT. <laughs> <laughs> give it, give it some. <laughs> Ryan Garcia better win this fight. I know that. All this shit he stirred up. If he go in there, Devin Haney knock his ass out, man. Man, pack pack Ryan Garcia up, man. It's over. He oh, got to win this fight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how did he leave the the compound? The Bahamian Grove. Yeah, like how, like, how did how did he leave? How do you leave Grace? Not he called the Uber Black. Like, did he actually check out? Where did he put his room key? Nah, he just left. You never check out. He nutted. But when did they stop restraining you? When it was over. Okay, go about your day? Yeah. Tell them they won't believe you. You know, that type of shit. Who's going to believe you? Not Rory Maul from the new Rory Maul podcast. I, I, I didn't sure. say, see, no, I didn't say I don't believe him. I said, I, I'm not sure if I believe him, but I'm not, I'm also not sure if I don't believe him. Like they just let him I go. It's like, hey, there's a ride share on the other side of the compound. <laughs> yeah, you got to call it over there and meet them over there, and they'll come pick you up. <laughs> not, not like the shuttle that leaves every three minutes. Imagine the shuttle leaving the Bahamian Grove. Everybody on the shuttle quiet after seeing what they just saw. It's like leaving Vegas, and you didn't hit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you hit, but then it, you still get like that post nut clarity of like, that's damn, that was kind of fucked up. It's terrible. Vegas is t- yo. Vegas is some somebody designed Vegas with the intent to destroy. Anybody that came to that city. I want to go to Vegas before I turn 30. No, you don't. Trust me. You want to go this month? Yeah, it was like, tomorrow? (laughs) Trust me. Well, that was something I wanted to do. Obviously, it's too late, but I do want to go to Vegas. Listen to me. You're not a Vegas person. Listen to me. You're not. You do not. They keep saying you don't sleep. That's not for me. I slept great. Why are you not listening to me? Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You do not want to go to Las Vegas. Why not? I want to have a hangover at night. You do not. You can have a hangover in Manhattan. No, I mean like a hangover. Like, I want to like have a tiger in the bathroom. No, you don't. You get that in Manhattan? Bronx Zoo, Harlem, Ming, Ming the Tiger. They took out of the projects. That's but, true, yeah. You know. <laughs> I mean, people thought I was lying about that. They took the tiger out of the projects? Yeah, Ming. Ming? Ming tiger. That's systematic and racism. Harlem. Yeah. Somebody had had it since she was young and then See, obviously well, started feeding and got too big. And, always taking resources out the hood. Yeah. They had to- <laughs> A tiger being the resource <laughs> in the hood. I mean, they need books and computers for sure. If, yeah. if you find another tiger and they have tiger babies, like, that's generational wealth. Who's a, setting up the tiger? Where are the tigers fucking? Not in my apartment. Where are the tigers fucking? You, there's crazier things happening in the projects than two tigers, tigers just work. fucking. Yo, R.I.P. to Ming. Oh, he died. Yeah. Damn. That's sad. Had to had to kill Ming. A part time taxi cab owner owned him. Yeah. Wait, they have his like memorial in in Saint Nick. Like, <laughs> where is that? <laughs> is that in Hamilton Park? <laughs> It's in Ohio, right? No, Minnesota. Nah, he from Harlem. That's crazy. So, but Maul, back... <laughs> why, why they buried him? Word. He was getting it in Ohio? Well, you ain't bury him in the Bronx, man. But Maul, um, as far as Vegas, like, so you say... I mean, you would never go because you don't drink, but I hear that, like, 48 hours in Vegas is enough. 
Way too much. Forty-eight. That's saying. That says something. That's saying something. That's more than enough. If forty-eight hours in the city, if they say your forty-eight hours in Vegas is enough, that means that forty-eight hours is gonna feel like a week and a half. Yeah, it does. That shit. Vegas is terrible. I'm telling you. Yo, you know what it is to walk to your room, and you walk past people at like slot machines and 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 poker tables and shit like that. You go upstairs. You get eight nine hours of sleep. Get dressed. Go back down. And you still see them same niggas sitting there. Yeah, it's not like the Casino Royale crowd. It's not like a James Bond uh, movie. It's just sad people that have like piss buckets. Yeah, you feel like, yo, did I go to sleep? You don't even know what life is. Like, yo, what the fuck? You like? It's like everything is just on like a revolving door. It's no like, windows, yo, I, no I've clocks. I've seen all of this. Like, what the, none of this shuts off. Like, it's these sounds, these lights, everything is 24 7 nonstop. Like, you don't, that's nowhere for you to want. You don't want to be there. Like, I'm from New York City. Being here, as soon as you land in New York, you feel the difference in the energy. Like you fit, you hear the cars, the the, the buses, the trains, the that. Like when you go on vacation and come back to New York, like if you go some, if you go like to an island for like a week and then land in JFK, you're it's like, yo, worst. why? Why do why I, I, I live in this? This shit is awful. Oh, I'm a basic bitch. I'm like oh, finally a deli. Not nah, hell no. I can Fuck. walk. I, I can, can walk make, to something. I can this make my great. own sandwich. When you leave, when you go somewhere where it's just quiet, serene, peaceful, mm-hmm. you know, does it stink? It's like, oh man, and then you come back and you like move out of the way, you fucking. <laughs> I'm like, yo, dog, why am I? I'm here? home. Leave it in. <laughs> why am I here? <laughs> it was an imp- it was impression. What is this? <laughs> it's awful. Finally, a city with that's, my values. That's what Vegas feels like. Really. And then you leave, if you're a gambling person, you know, the house always wins. So nothing more sad than flight I'm gambling, leaving Vegas. Like, my own money in Vegas is insane. Whoever's money you gambling. I'm going to learn how to count cards. <laughs> right, okay, Rain Man. You must have seen Casino. I've seen Ocean's Eleven. That was very accurate. Mm, very true. Can just I can just get a machine that takes all the power out. Just, that, just, I'm sure they have that on eBay somewhere. You can the house and then, always and then dress a wins. 75 year old in a, a SWAT. But I feel like if you are, I feel <laughs> like kind of rope. Gambling is kind of like taking a multiple choice test. You got to just use common sense. Like, don't use oh. your brain so much. Ah, use common I sense. See, I see the type of woman Damaris is going to be. Because when you break it down just like that. know when yeah. to get the fuck up. People you should don't be a know pit when boss to get the fuck up. You yeah. are selling some yeah. bullshit right you now. You should be a pit boss. <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying is bullshit. No, Damaris. but you should know when to get the fuck up because Damaris. they're going to let you win a little bit so that they can No, they're they can not. They're going to let you win. There's they no are grace. not going to let you win. Yeah, there's no grace. Put it like this. If you go sit down right now at a at at a a poker table, first time ever playing poker, and you hit for 20 grand, right? First hand, hit 20 grand. The house don't care. The nigga two tables from you just lost 100 grand. And he's, Did they and give he's a still fuck playing. about that punk ass 20 grand they just gave you? <laughs> they don't give a fuck about that shit. But the odds of that happening are... Not a multiple choice test. 37 million to one. Like, that's not going to happen. You're not going to win. Yeah, on a Scantron, I have a one... In four I feel chance. like I could, hit, I could hit Vegas on Blackjack for a quick little 5K and, and dip. But how yeah. much are you spending though to get hit hit that five? No, and in Damaris's scenario, it's the one hand she's no, sits not down the one plays. hand. No, I play blackjack, so probably I'll probably spend like a thousand, leave with five thousand. I made a four K come up, had a fun weekend. We landed in Vegas, and I was like, I have to go to Caesars and play blackjack. Put two hundred dollars worth of chips within five minutes. It was gone. I was like, that was the dumbest thing I've ever done. Yeah, that was stupid. It's yo, I'm telling you that, that city to was say that designed. I played blackjack and Caesars was not worth that two hundred. I wouldn't go to Caesars. I'd go to one of the little ones in a cut. You know oh, those are the worst matter, ones. Though. Yeah, yeah. The, those are the ones with the <laughs> the dice is fake. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> them niggas ain't even sanctioned. And that's where <laughs> and that's where twenty k will really affect them. So they not letting you win. Yeah, like yeah, you not walking out. You like y'all just hit for twenty k. They're like, no, we hit for twenty k. And they got they got people outside. If you do win to rob you, just yeah, they go yeah. Lie to Are you kidding me? The off the off the pit off boss brand? is like, yo, he walking out now with twenty k. You 20K. go to off brand casinos off the strip if you want to and see what happens. Man, hell no. But I do like driving into Vegas from LA, though. That is a nice drive. It's a fun drive, yeah. It's a really at night. Drive. You got to do it at night. How long is it? Like two hours? Three. A little almost closer to yeah. three. Closer to three. But I like it because it's like, it reminds you of those movies where you see people like in the desert and they're driving and they see like a broke down gas station and 
Like it's really that type of shit on the side of the road. And you think that that's like cool to like and like if you to go- actually see it, I think it's it's like oh shit, like these are real. Like this is really broken down gas stations on the side of the, we don't see that going down the turnpike to fucking Philly. And when we there's no broken down gas stations on the turnpike, they all work. Yeah. <laughs> when we drove, we stopped in like Barstow, whatever it's called, and it, it's 115 degrees, and you're at an awful gas station. Yeah, it was that's a fun experience. That's better than two hundred dollars. At Caesars. Now, I'm not going to lie. If you start seeing that gas tank, you're like, nigga, hold on. Because the next gas, it's, the next, the yeah, next like gas West station <laughs> ain't for another 60-something miles. So you better make sure that gas tank before you leave LA is to the brim full. Because it gets scary because you want just a straight road. And it's like, bro, it's nothing out here. What's also funny is like they have a bunch of billboards. And the closer you get to Vegas, they have like random hotels that are also casinos. You have a actual problem if you're driving to Vegas, but have such an impulse to gamble, you stop at one of the hotels. Nah, right, catch a quick lick. <laughs> yeah, quick lick. Quick lick. Get back on the road. You have an issue. It was a. It was a. It was. A, it's a little bullshit motel in Vegas. Like they they got actual slot machines in the room. That's sick. In, in the room. room is sick. And probably no condoms. Nah, no condoms. <laughs> in your room was slot machine. <laughs> you know how crazy that is. They have slot machines in the airport. Okay, now, now here is where we say they, yeah, people are mentally ill. They are taking advantage of people's mental illness in Maul's voice. But that, they turn yeah. people, they turn people mentally ill because if you, it's a lot of documentaries and stories about people that, like, the, a lot of the homeless population in Vegas are people that went there on vacation and just lost everything. Sounds about right. Like, literally gambled their life savings, had to call their wife, tell their wife, wife fucking, you know, obviously hung up, don't want to hear him, divorce, whatever. The kids don't fuck with him and they have no money to, to leave. They just end up living on the streets of Las Vegas. But they went there on vacation. Like, they had money. <laughs> they just sat at a table and just decided like, fuck it, man. I'm going to just tap into this life savings and try to hit the, get this money back. I need to get this 50 grand back. When you lose that, that last 50 grand and you got to call wifey, I don't it's, think it's go such home an though. interesting concept. I suck a couple. If I have like if I've saved fifty k in a savings to be like I'm gonna go gamble this. Yeah, but so, it hap- you know that oh, shit happens. It's happening right now. Yeah, as we're saying, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's just a. But that's why I say that's the, the Vegas is fucking just the idea, the concept of that city is insane to me. It's insane. That shit was designed to suck you dry. In other ways, no too. pun intended. Firehead. <laughs> Well, I want to go. So one of y'all got all go. of that. This nigga, see, you wanted them. I know the type of kid you was, Damaris. You got to touch the stove. You got to touch the stove and see that blister on your palm to know never to do that again. That's the type of kid. They you said are. crack is whack, and Damaris was like, "Is it? Yeah, is let, it? Let me find out for myself. Like, what's whack about it? That's who Damaris. What's whack about it? Go ahead and smoke it. Fire it up, <laughs> Nancy Reagan. <laughs> Nancy up. Reagan, you whack. Yeah, go ahead and so fire it must it up. be cool. Damaris saw the brains on uh, the brains on. Drug commercial with the egg in the pan. She was like, I don't, that's how I cook mine. It's over easy. Yeah. <laughs> I consider myself sunny side. I just think it's something that everybody should do. So I'm going to do it. Lose I know. your life savings? Smoke crack? No. I n- <laughs> what, go uh, to Vegas? Go to Vegas. And smoke crack. I just Stay feel- out of the pools. Oh, God, no. I don't Ugh. do... And I, uh, I hear they're like heated. You want to do Dreas? No. We watch, Stay out of the pools. We yeah. watch them put on full scuba gear. After one of the day parties to go clean the pool. Like, no, full head to toe, like scuba steam. Scrape shit. the cum off the bottom of the pool. Because people just putting on bikinis, going down, ain't washing their ass. Uh, we nigga watched just, someone try to eat went pussy to his room, underwater. took his shit, and then went right back to the pool. That and then you in there talking about, I fucking love Vegas. You got all that shit in your mouth, and then go ahead, go upstairs, shitty mouth. <laughs> and they let us chill for a while. <laughs> Instead of kicking us out to watch like the whole pool cleaning thing, I thought they put sand at the bottom of the pool. Like I thought it was an aesthetic. Mm-hmm. They started to clean. I was like, oh, that's dirt. That's a regular pool bottom. Yeah. I uh, thought it was real sand. No, it's terrible. It was dirt. When you see those day parties like empty out and you see the uh, pool, it's insane the shit that's in there. Like I'm never getting in a pool for a day party though. I'll sit on the side in a little cabana with like my little champagne or whatever. I'm not getting in the pool at a pool party. That shit is gross. Uh, he was he was doing laughs at the Clevelander in Miami. Don't say that. Mm. Never in my life. Doing laps. <laughs> doing laps. <laughs> laps is sick. <laughs> at the Clevelander. I'm a hoe. I put my feet in the water at the Clevelander. 
You definitely had your t-shirt on in the pool. With the yeah, Roy. Roy left his socks on and shirt. I yeah. think I put my feet in. At he the had his la- merch the on. Laundry on. <laughs> he had his merch Roy on. Had his merch on. <laughs> Any moments at the mo. Clevelander? <laughs> Just a fly on the wall. Just merch rolled in the t-shirts. It was really <laughs> sleeve was rolled up Just with yeah. a pack of Marlboros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's his West Side Story swag. <laughs> <laughs> Public pools are gross, just any capacity, not just the the club pools. I just never got behind the shared communal water thing. Yeah, yeah chlorine. Nah. But you shower at the gym. <laughs> nah. What is it? It works. Yeah, it's a shower. As long as you got flip-flops on. Yes, I do. Uh, people, people are so stupid. And they also just like project this like version of themselves. Like, it was like, oh, his towels, he brings them on the train. They get dusty and dirty on the train. No, idiot. I walk to and from the gym. It's right. a 10 minutes from my apartment. Mm. They never go underground. If that's your rule of cleanliness. Mm. Fucking. But Julian, you do know that, that, that gym, gym, yes, they wash them, but they still hold the bacteria from everybody else using them in the gym. No, they don't. I wouldn't know. I'm, I'm convinced. convinced. Well, I haven't had a bacterial that. infection of any, si- of any kind. Before we get to the next voicemail, what was the woman's name from the original voicemail? Michelle. Michelle. I want Michelle to call back to tell us about that wild threesome because she said it was a crazy story. Yeah, Michelle, yeah, you got to call back and give us that threesome, man. Give us that threesome story. I hope it happened not in Chicago and like somewhere else. We should title this episode, Michelle, tell us about your threesome. Something, I live there. I'm just saying, I hope it happened on her travels. I mean, a threesome in Chicago is probably fun. I'd have a threesome in Chicago. I never Yo, listen, man, Schoolboy Q album is still really good. <laughs> I'd have a threesome in any city. A week later, it's still really good, like it's aging well. Well, you know, a lot of this shit, is, the shelf life on a lot of these niggas is two days. Which is crazy that we have to say that. Yeah. I'm still listening a week later. Yeah. Still listening. Same. Still sounds good. Yeah, I like it a lot. I hope he stops by. What's you guys' favorite song? Mm, the joint with Jazzy is dope. You love Jazzy? I love Jazzy. It was one of the first records he put out, but Blue Slides is still one of my favorite joints. Mm-hmm. That, that was on repeat the most, I feel like. Um... The thank you joint is fire. I love that B switch. Um, but no, it's, it's still in rotation at my house. Shout out to Q, man. Q really, it's 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 dope to see like dudes that you didn't think would have like a long recording career mm. or like a successful recording career, like stand the test of time and continue to put out dope shit. And Q is one of those artists for me. Like, I don't think Schoolboy has a whack album. I he's like his projects are really good projects. This one is is really good. Still, like I said, I'm listening. I like it more and more the more I hear it. Um, I think this is some of his best rapping by far. I think he's this is his this is his best rapping. Best rapping. I haven't heard Q rap better than this. Agreed. Definitely yeah. agree. Um, we have one more voicemail or yeah. Uh, this is the one I was gonna play at the beginning of the episode. Hey y'all, let a pod. Um, my name is Queenie. I'm from California. I just need a little bit of advice. So recently me and my best friend have gotten into it because I told her that I'm tired of hearing about her relationship problems. Now, mind you, she's been on and off with the same guy for, I want to say like four or five years, but he's never put a title on their relationship. So he's had whole relationships on her and fucked other people. She's caught him fucking other people and she continues to go back. So recently she was trying to tell me about a problem that they were having and she was crying about it. And I was like, I'm kind of tired of hearing about it because you're going to be crying on the phone to me. And then next week when he call you, so he can, you know what I'm saying? Fuck again. You're going to be right back over there. So am I being a bad friend for telling her I'm done hearing about it? Or should I like give her some grace because, you know, we've all been a sucker for somebody. Just let me know because some of my friends are saying that I'm being a bad friend while others are saying basically like that it's key for me to also protect my peace. So just let me know what y'all think. Again, love the pod. Hey, Damaris, with your beautiful ass. Um, Hi, boo. I'll see y'all later. No, I don't. I- think setting boundaries after a pattern like that is, is fine. I would do the same thing. Yeah, with friends. as friends, I think it's important to have that. She gave a lot of chances. Have that moment. Like, I want my homeboys to tell me, like, yo, bro, you tripping. Like, leave that girl alone. Like, stop calling her. It's over. Move on. 
You need your homies to say that sometimes. And you're an adult, so you can make whatever decision you want to, but I have the right to say don't talk to me about it because this is getting old and I've already told you it's not good for you. So don't come to me. Don't ask for my advice and continue not to take it. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's wrong at all. I think I've, the right thing. I've definitely been there where I had a friend, um, friend, multiple friends who've just like been with the wrong nigga and it's just like, all right, girl, like this shit is getting old. What I will say is as I've gotten older... Um, You're 29. No, but as I've got... This is... I don't know if you know, but we've been getting played by niggas since we were like 12. So like, it's been a fucking while. Getting Here played by the niggas. Mentality. Yo, getting played by niggas since you was 12 is crazy. Sounds statutory. <laughs> niggas, you know how crazy that is? Niggas like, been dirt since like dirt. Like, so a nigga's supposed to be a stand-up nigga at 12 years old. He's supposed to have it all figured out. Yeah. Like, he's supposed to be the most respectful. What do you expect in the behavior? Yeah, like. Of- <laughs> what, did, what did he do? You know he didn't bring didn't bring her a juice box. Yeah, yeah. he didn't bring her no cheese puffs that yeah. day. No, bought another girl a carnation on Valentine's Day. Like swag. You still you ain't know? recovered from that heartbreak. A carnation. It's just we've been dealing with men for a long time, so you be you know it shits get gets old after a while. But to my point, um, if you're not comfortable giving her advice anymore because she doesn't listen to the vi- advice, I get that. But if you've already told her how you feel, you've told her, you've had that conversation like, yo, you being an idiot, he's never going to love you, he's never going to do this, he's never going to act right. If you've had that conversation already and she still wants to like keep touching the stove, like Maul said, then at this point, just be there just to listen to her vent. That's what I would do. Like, listen to her vent. Be there uh, for your friend and her mental health because you're not going to change her mind. She's not so, like when she. Let me ask you something. Who have you had better relationships with, men or women? What do you mean? Like sexual relationships. I'm, the girl asked for advice. No, but I'm, I'm just. I'm trying to. I'm trying to see something here. What do you like mean? Who, sexual like who have you had when you were dating like women versus dating men? Like, who did you have better experiences with, men or women? I don't. That's not a fair comparison because I don't date women in the same capacity that I date men. I don't give women okay. the full Damaris experience the okay. way that men get it. Okay, that's fair. But yeah, yeah, don't don't skip out on your friend. Honestly, um, just I know it can get old. I know it can get annoying as fuck. But like, just man, fuck, fuck that. that. Tell your friend. Listen, you gonna keep hitting your head, bumping your head with this dumbass dude. You are gonna run yourself into a, a fucking a situation you can't get yourself out of. Just cut your losses short now and move on. Yes, you can tell you're, her that, but she's not going to do that. You're being an enabler. No, you're like, not being an enabler. No, but that's a, as a friend, somebody, no, Demaris, let me tell you firsthand, as a friend, would you, as long as you get it off and say that you said it, whether they take that advice and take heed to it or not, that ain't on But, she, but y'all aren't listening. She said she did that already. Okay, so then yeah, shut the fuck up. Oh, what's her name? Uh, Queenie. Queenie, then that's it. Leave the, to leave that, to that point is why I think she should leave it alone. She was there multiple times for her. It's getting old at this point. Back to the gambling shit. If somebody, if my friend loses 50 grand of his life savings, I'll be there for him. And he gets his money back up and goes back to the casino. I'll still be there for him and really tell him, yo, you are fucking up. The third time he goes, once he has his money again, I'm not, don't talk to me. Yeah. I can say don't just, I would say don't talk to me. No, I'm not here to support you because you continue to go blow your fucking life savings. Rory, that's not fair because you have female friends who have gone back to niggas over and over and over and over and over again. And every time I want to vent to you about it, you'll listen. You'll tell me the truth. You'll tell me about myself, but you listen. Yeah, but it's not... I like how Damaris said you have female friends that go back to... She raised her head. Say, and they say, but I, then I'll listen, I'll come back to you. <laughs> I'm not okay. the only one, but... But like when you'll, when you'll vent, and I'm, I'm not telling your business, like y'all will be separated and he might fuck someone else. This guy is just constantly cheating on this girl nonstop. That's not anything you vented to me about. You've been on breaks, ups and downs, and like somebody you're trying to see a whole long-term relationship with. This guy's just fucking other bitches every day. Mm. Way different. You've never vented to me in that way. No. Because if, if the guy you was talking about was just fucking bitches while y'all were in a committed relationship, Damaris, I would tell you, leave that and stop talking to me about this. Leave. Mm. Like it's done. I mean, I don't know. I get to a point, I've gotten to a point where it's just like, yo, shorty, if that's what you want to deal with, you must like that. Then that's the, and I'll say that, like when you're venting, like, well, you must like it because you won't leave. One day you'll get tired of it. Like, and that's that. And then eventually the friend will probably stop talking to you about it because you're making her feel stupid. But I never want a man to be able to isolate my friends away from me. Because once he has you like that, then you're, you're cooked. Once you can't vent to your friends or your family and everybody's tired of you, now you alone and this nigga is all that you have, I never want to put my friends in that predicament. So it might be tough for me, like watching her be a dumb bitch over and over and over again and telling her she's being a dumb bitch over and over and over again. But 
But I mean, I, if she want to go uh, vent about work to her, great. I was going to say, don't that. vent about this fucking guy. Compartmentalize it. Yeah. Like, I'm coming about anything else in your life. I gave you I'm my done piece on that. Life. Don't come to me with that topic. I'll talk to you about the rest of your life because we're still friends. Leave all that shit. Yeah. Because someone else wants to listen. And if your friend keep asking you for advice on relationships and you keep giving them advice and they're not listening, they don't want your advice. They just Some people talk. just want to vent. Yeah. They just Some people talk. just want to. Well, they just want to hear what they should do and then know that it's just like actively still not. They're like, oh, I should. Yeah, but I can't deal with that. I have friends that type that, of I, shit. I cut a couple people out. Because that's life not really. Like but that. people are never really asking for advice when it comes to love. They're they're looking for you to give them permission to do what they want to do anyway. After the third vent. venting to to Queenie, at that point she just want to hear herself talk. Like, yeah. there's not much advice that you could even offer. If somebody is continually cheating on you, mm -hmm. like yeah. we, this isn't going to be some long, deep conversation right. after the third time you caught him cheating. <laughs> Hi. This is a five minute conversation. Like, hey, it's time to move on. Well, Queenie, um, hopefully we gave you some some solid advice. Not like you going take it, but I mean, no, but Queenie isn't the one. No, I'm saying she's probably you know she just wants to hear our thoughts on it. But yeah, and if you care about your friend, that is that could be a kick in the ass to her. Like, all right, my friend won't even talk to me about this whole shit. Like, it must be bad now. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, Queenie, if y'all not doing anything March 23rd, come on down to Washington, D.C. We'll be at the <laughs> Howard Theater. Uh, we got plenty more advice for you. Uh, it'll be a good time. Tickets available now, Um, And we'll see everybody down there soon. Yep. Um, what you got going on this weekend? Fly on the wall? Um... I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I have anything. I think I'm going to go see uh, the One Love movie. Still haven't seen it yet. You used to always say you can go see a movie and never go see it. But I know. Nah, I've been doing pretty good, though. Like, I've, I've gone to see most of the movies that I wanted to see. Um, but I haven't gone to see uh, the Bob Marley movie. I think I'm going to go see it this weekend, though. I'm maybe maybe we all go together and, like, do it at a theater that's by your new crib and then... After we just like all that's chill. That's a horrible out. idea. We all chill. Actually, there's no we theaters. We all chill there. at your crib. There's no theaters. You already told. Oh, no. no we moved. It's in the building. I was about to say the other one was across in the street. In the building. Yeah, it's the fuck the do building. I live at? In the fucking Tom Warner building? It's in Maybe. The building. Yeah. No, I do not. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to go see that this weekend. Uh, or I could bring my projector mm. to your new crib and we could just find like an illegal download and watch it all together. In or this crib. is sad. It's that sounds like a terrible idea. I watched American Fiction... Uh, and um, Past Lives uh, earlier this week, and they are both fantastic films. Both uh, American uh, Fiction. What's that about? It's um, the, it's you guys would love it. It's with uh, damn, what's his name? It's actually gonna bother me. Jesse, uh, Jer oh, yeah. Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright. Oh, that's one of my favorite actors. He's incredible. The the whole. Oh, is this the one where he he the, wrote the movie? The book. He wrote the book. like. Is he's a he's a scholar, uh, writer, author, but none of his shit was selling. And the shit that was selling is like the black experience through you know the shit that white people want to see. Like, oh, he made it out the ghetto. It's like that kind yes, of shit. Yeah. So Issa Rae plays this other author who wrote one of those kind of books. It's like, of course she does. You know, Tyrone made it out the trap, and now he's you know he's she found wrote Jesus. Freedom writers. Yeah. It's like one of those. So then, so then he as a joke like comes up with a pseudonym and writes one of those bullshit books, and it immediately becomes like a prized piece and it's it's a really really well done uh film but you guys should watch it, it it's my favorite uh of the year to be honest uh it, it's really great and uh check that out covers on a lot of cool shit and then past lives is a beautiful love story uh i cried before going to bed last night so that was fun. wait what mm -hmm. did you call your mom no she was asleep in the morning he did though Definitely. The mom I cried last night. You guys should see. It takes place in New York. Jules, it's a lot hi. of good, a lot of good shots. Oh, Jules, why did you cry? Jules there we go. What happened? Do you need your blankie? <laughs> you know he has his blankie. At his oh, crib. he has his blankie. Yeah, mom doesn't have. Oh a blankie. man, yeah, mom. Do, mom doesn't have a blankie, but Jules does. <laughs> <laughs> done. Right. Yes, I'm sorry. All right, today twenty four films really well done. Great love story. Uh, it's uh, about this like Korean. Uh, All right, can you tell me why you cried though? You don't tell me the movie. See the ending. Me. Okay. All right. Cool. I don't want to spoil it because they. No. No. Yeah. I don't do want that. To. Did you see this? You went to the theater to see this? No. This is on Amazon Prime. Okay. Got you. Copy. All right. Yeah. I was at the crib. I might watch that. I might watch that and 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 not cry. I'm starting to notice the pattern with you. All Asian casts make you cry. Yeah. He loves that. They write good stuff. What do you mean all Asian? Oh, everything everywhere. Yeah. 
anytime there's just a lot of they're Asians good writers on the cast, Julian's gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird play. Is, is it a fact though? <laughs> yo, yo, <laughs> has nothing to point do out the lie. All Asian, Asian movies make Julian cry. <laughs> 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 Makes no sense. <laughs> Fuck you. That's fucking insane. That would be insane if you put on a movie and it's just age people and your man just start crying. You're like, yo, why you cry? <laughs> I already know this one's gonna. gonna it's like, it's like Red Dragon. <laughs> yeah, like what you crying? The Jet for, Li though? film. I was gonna. Go, I was gonna go with Last Rush Samurai hour. with, with Rush Asian Rush Rush hour. hour. What's the one where he was a dog and they had like a collar on, on Jet Li? What? What movie was that? Was DMX in that one? What? Oh, Cradle to the Grave. Unleashed. Unleashed. You Cradle cry- to the Grave is a really good movie, though. It is a great movie. Um, first of all. Jet Li having a, a collar on oh, a yeah, movie called right. Unleashed is fucking hilarious. Yeah. Julian definitely cried watching Unleashed. Did you cry on Rick Crazy Witch Asians? No. Uh, no. Karate Kid. He definitely <laughs> cried. <laughs> it was only one Asian, the Karate Kid. <laughs> Mr. Miyagi, that was it. <laughs> yeah. The right. wax on scene was so yo, powerful. Yeah, yo, kid. yo, he was on the beach practicing his crane kick. Get the fuck out of here. That crane kick could get you knocked the fuck out in 2024. You try that shit right now, Rory, and see what happens. A slow wind <laughs> kick. Yo, <laughs> imagine the, the imagine the nigga out. do this now. He's ready to fight you. I'm like, man, I, see, I saw the movie. I know what's going to happen. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you up as soon as you throw that I, slow ass Crackheads kick. love that move and it's effective for them. Crackheads? Crackheads definitely do this before they're going to fight. I, I've never Wouldn't you just crazy. sweep the leg? Also, look at he, his arms aren't in a defensive stance. Like he's so exposed. So exposed. He's so. Just, this was his such, chin is so available. Yo, <laughs> this movie is proof that back in the '80s you could have wrote anything and it was a hit. Mm-hmm. Like who thought like we're gonna do the crane kick and that's gonna be like the way he wins the tournament? And that crane kick could get your fucking jaw broke. Maul, did you cry on the Pursuit of Happiness movie? All right, let me be honest. All right, here we go. Let me be honest. It takes Will Smith for you to cry. I didn't cry. Mm. I didn't cry. But I felt something in my nose and eye area right here. Okay. I felt something. It made me resent women more. Yeah, fuck bitches. <laughs> How did you get that from that movie? That mom was a piece of shit. Or was she a stressed out woman, overworked, and her husband? So she should abandon her family. She didn't have a soft life, you know. She no, she shouldn't have been her family. She was you know, able only, to sleep, only, eat, fuck, only go to women, bodies, drink a latte. Only women will be forgiven for abandoning their family and forcing them to live in a public bathroom. I only not, women could get away with that. I did not forgive her. Yeah. I'm I sorry, not, get understanding. You said she was a shitty person. She was a shitty person. Yes, she was. People give men understanding all the time. Abandoning your standing. children, you're a shitty person. First ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah. There's no debate here. Of course, but what I'm saying is- You can't be that girl if you're not that mom. I can't- I hate you so much. That's a thing people say? <laughs> no, it's not. A that thing. It sounds real. It sounds like something girls would say. You can't be that girl if you're not that That's mom. Like some single mother would have as like a bumper sticker. Yeah, like get the fuck. I was just saying that extremely poor people have different ways of surviving and trying to stay afloat. So that's all I'm saying. I'm not sticking up for her or anybody else. Yeah, the dad had it. But they were extremely... They dad were had a very, very different way of dealing with that. Yeah, it's not like she... She left home to go get some money to then come back. She just left. Yeah. You know, Rory, out of this whole entire beautiful movie and all the things that happen, you hating the mom is just like, mm. that's being the one thing that you remember out of the whole movie? Mm-mm-mm. Is it that, not a significant part of the movie? No, it's not. It's literally not a significant part of the movie. I think she left within the first 20 minutes. He, yeah. He I stopped, mean, it's still a significant part. He stopped the uh, dad selling and the computers and shit. It was the dad and the son together because the mom... Left him. He didn't have a pen or paper. It actually sets up the entire movie because now he's trying to run around and do daycare because she's lo- like she left. He got to go sleep in the, you know, shelter and bathroom, wash clothes in the sink. You know, they would have still been doing all that had she stayed. They just would have been doing it together. And she was like a housekeeper, wasn't she? Probably like for a hotel. Yeah, I think she was like a housekeeper. She couldn't get us a discount at the hotel, so we could go. They were poor, poor. They still wouldn't have been able to afford that hotel. If you work there, I'm guessing you can get a room. And you know when... if she Housekeepers? Stayed, yeah, you get a discount if you work You get a discount, but they still probably wouldn't have been able to afford it with the discount. Is what I'm mm, I see what you're saying. If she stayed, she still would have given them shit like, you weren't working, you were at a baseball game. You were at the Giants game. Mm. I could see it. Yeah. 
It's a be- it was a beautiful movie. Great movie. I didn't cry, but I definitely, a- I definitely felt something right here. I was more of a seven pounds crier when it came to Will Smith movies. Seven pounds got me. Mm. I think I cried during seven pounds. I'm going to go home and watch it. I haven't watched it in like 10 years. I Am Legend when he strangles the dog. Choked up a bit. Bad Boys 4, they just wrapped. Yes, I'm excited. I'm not. Keep it. You know. Yeah, I didn't like Bad Boys 3. Still, still I just don't want to see Martin. And, I don't want to see Martin trying to do his own running scenes no more. Why? Because Martin can't run. He could barely run in Bad Boys 2. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like. <laughs> exactly. So imagine three is how many years after Bad Boys 2? Well, he was, he was hurt the majority of Bad Boys 3. Um, but Bad Boys 3 was still, obviously it's not as good as 2 and 1, but Bad Boys 3 was not a bad movie. At no, it wasn't all. a bad movie, but I just, I don't want to see Will in, well, Will's kind of still sort of in shape, but I don't want to see. Will's very much in shape. I don't want to see Martin trying to like fall out of windows and get up and run. Just like, let Martin just be like the dude, the dispatch guy now. Let him be funny like as a dispatcher. Like, Mike, get your ass over there, Mike. You know, let him do that shit from, don't show Martin out there running around, jumping through shit. Don't do that. I, well, give it a try. I say, you haven't seen three, Rory? No. See, I'm I thought about it on a I'm plane. For, I'm, I'm clicking it, but I was like, I'm, I'm cool. forcing you to watch it. I'm coming over this week. Martin needs glasses gonna... now. <laughs> he can't shoot without his glasses. It's like, what, what are we doing? At least it's accurate. Yeah, but come on, man. Put, it's time to go sit down. It's time. Uh, it's not for life, for real. One of you niggas is going to die trying to do the, the next five. <laughs> <laughs> for he now. Had, he had yeah. never seen a... Bad Boys for now. Bad Boys for now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we wasn't Bad Boys 3 four. called For Life? <laughs> They're still lifing? Wasn't it Bad Boys 3? Well, that's, I feel for like life? that's been the catchphrase this whole thing. Well, for life. They, yeah. they, they but the four I get. Right, but see, I, you know why I'm, I'm scared for this one? To be honest. No I, ludicrous. No. Oh. The total opposite. I feel like, like he got the mumps. I feel like this is... <laughs> that, don't do that. I feel like, like this is... Gout. <laughs> yo, yeah, shit, that's a legend. Don't do I that. I agree. I feel like Bad Boys is headed to the Fast and Furious route. <laughs> the I don't that's think why they're going to make ludicrous. it to 10. Them two are not going to survive the 10. Like no way, because the stunts that they was trying to do in three, I was like, all right, all right. <laughs> I seen where this shit turned in Fast and Furious. I see where it went with the Irishman. Yeah, chill out. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it more like you know. It don't got to be so much action. I understand you're trying to keep it an action film, but let's let's keep it more comedy now. The best thing about those movies, I mean, it, the action has always been good, especially like the driving scenes in Miami and all of that. But the comedy, the banter is what makes those movies. Do we need so more great. of that as these niggas get older. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> just they gonna start a podcast. I was gonna say <laughs> yeah. the fifth. Yeah, the, the yeah. Fifth these one niggas is just a podcast. Yeah, these niggas. It's just like I right, fam. Come, let's, let's, they can podcast with guns. Yeah. Bad Boys 3, they shot homie and he survived it miraculously and all kind of shit. Don't tell Rory. He ain't going to watch this movie. You know what I'm Somebody saying? already spoiled it for him. Isn't like his son in it or something? It's, yeah. we'll, we'll watch it. Somebody spoiled it for me already. Jaden's in it? Yeah. Yes. He's in it. Shout um, out to the Karate Kid. Kia had never seen The Patriot before, so we watched it yesterday. Oh, and I love Gibson? Yeah. I love that movie. Of and I hadn't seen it in a long time. But I started to get judgy in the beginning of like, Mel Gibson trying to be get sympathy for being this widower was some of the most selfish shit I've ever seen in my life. Of course your wife is going to die when you make her have seven kids in the 1700s. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, seven, having seven kids in 2024 might kill a woman. Mm. You made your wife have seven kids in the 1700s and now is like, how'd she die? And all she had was a fucking <laughs> uh, a, a bowl of hot water by the bed and some towels. <laughs> Can you imagine the 1700s making your That's wife they do have the seven fucking kids? They just rinse out the, the, the towel and a bowl of hot water and just put it on the... It's like she's hemorrhaging. She's going to need more that than That pussy hot must have looked crazy. And what's funny is... <laughs> Kia asked, like, well, how'd the wife die? I was like, they never address it. And I finally realized, because it's obvious, she had seven kids. Mm. She definitely died on the last one. Yeah, she died trying to, trying to give birth. Like, the if she made it to five, you have to feel like, wow, I can't believe we did that. We should chill. And you know she's only 24. Oh, I was going to go with like 14. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's sick. They started having kids at like 14 back then, right? Yeah. Back the then, now, right after the period. They tried it now. Yeah, they do it now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Six times. All right. Well, enjoy your week and be safe. We'll talk to y'all soon. I'm that nigga. He's just ginger. Peace. No worry, I'm not.